clothes and all right so seeking out Brumal's love interest Tawny you make your way to Whitestone along the way uh, you eventually reach Turst Fields uh, it's a farming village that is uh, primarily one of the biggest sources of produce uh, in pretty much most of eastern Tal'Dorei. Uh, a lot of the fields have been left to rot and dry up. You see many of the residents have abandoned their homes. Uh, many of them have been uh, very much uh, damaged. Uh, doors have been kicked in and outwards. Uh, windows smashed. The insides just look tossed. Uh, you see old blackened stains of blood uh, on the floorboards that you can just see from the open windows and open doors. Uh, you see some people still mill about, uh, regular denizens. Uh, many of them seem to be weak, uh, malnourished. Uh, you see some of the gnolls that actually live here uh, amongst the humans also look to be, for the most part, kind of malnourished wounded uh, and you see some shields shields of the plain much like uh, Xerakil once was uh, milling about as well uh, trying in essentially to do their jobs but they're not putting a, a whole lot of effort really into it, it looks like uh, a lot of hope is lost in this area as you continue on you start to make your way down the trail towards Whitestone. After a few days, probably about halfway there, probably a little bit more, you see a courier kind of making their way down the road from Whitestone. And he appears to be kind of young, early 20s, uh, has this kind of large rucksack on his back, and he uh, approaches you all at a, at a quick jaunt and kind of takes out a piece of paper and kind of holds it up to the light and kind of matches it towards uh, where you guys are and says, Ah, are you, uh, are you Brumal? Who's asking? Uh, I'm, a I'm a courier. Uh, this is a man paid me a gold piece uh, to see if there's anybody coming down the road who matches your description. Um... The message is, uh, let's see, it kind of goes through his envelopes and he hands you uh, a small little kind of cue card message. On it, it essentially says, do not alert Lady Vexalia. Follow the sued, find Tawny. Say who it's by, eh? Oh, sincerely or anything? No. Um... What the guy look like who gave you this message? Uh, he uh, kind of looks a little bit like uh, Brumal. A little bit, a little bit younger. Uh, he's Brumal's he's a, brother. A cloaked, hooded folk. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have. So, well, just kind of holds out his hand. Shadow. Yeah, was he uh, cloaked in shadow? Uh, well, Blades, for the leather. Part, yeah. Sounds to be about right. I have an idea. Follow the sued. Right? Isn't that, like, drug thing that yeah. some people are using? Yeah. I give the I give the kid, like, a gold. Oh! <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Some people still tip, so that's nice. And he starts rushing off back towards... Before he goes, before he goes, I kind of grab him and say, You didn't see us. And I hand him two more gold pieces. Oh, where did this gold come from? Huh. Ah. He just takes off. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> right. Well. So. Uh, well, I, I don't know if that was really the idea anyway. So, seek Salia. Uh, that might have proved difficult anyway. Just uh, considering that the low profile we need to keep is... Imperative. Um, yeah. So, um, I guess we're 
first fields were just how far away to Whitestone are the fields? Like they're just right outside the town, I'm assuming, right? No, they're they are quite far. Uh, if you look where your icons currently are, let's see. Okay. Oh yeah, we're away. All right. So that's probably what is a square on the map like? Uh, how let's far? See. Actually, I have a little interactive map that I could use. Ooh, fancy. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, from tourist fields to Whitestone. Oops, Daisy. It's not working. Oopsie. Oh, that's a real. Ooh. There we go. That's wicked. I could map the whole thing out. Perfect. Directly to Whitestone is 277 miles from Turst Fields. We're wow. not American. We got, we got a long time again. Kilometers, kilometers. Wow. Times that by 2.2. Oh, wait, no, that's kilograms. <laughs> it's so at a standard pace, you can go 30 miles a day. Or about a couple off, uh, few weeks, depending. Uh, considering you guys are about, oh god, I'm looking at two different maps. You guys are about right about here at this point. Oh, okay. So we're not actually the blue diamond then. No, you passed the Turst Fields, and you guys are over halfway there, and you oh, found see. a courier okay. that caught you. Okay. All right. Well, we're, that makes so far from Congress home. Nope, Ten. I was just north of that. We didn't really have much homes or buildings. Just kind of slept on the ground in caves and yep. Seeing as how we're here, is there? I know, I know, time is of the essence, but we're passing through your uh, your homestead, well, Congar. If you home to, right here. yeah, like we're we're not too far from it. I'm assuming probably closer to. Closer to there than we are to Whitestone. Uh, probably. Well, you guys are about here, so it's pretty much the same both ways. However, to go see the the clan there, you'd have to go into the mountains. At the same time, you do have yeah. news that his whole clan went to Stillben. They ran away. Okay. They run away. And well then. Blame them. Um. I guess we keep heading towards Whitestone. Probably for the best. This will be as... Should we stay off the main road? I'm thinking maybe might be a good idea. I mean, the courier found us easy enough. Um, I'm going to assume it was my son that sent him, given description from the courier. Um, unless... Did your, your son disappear on you? Well, that's what I was thinking. He, I, I don't know if he was kidnapped... Or if he went off on his own accord, he just left without a trace, which I'm actually impressed by, considering that I couldn't tail him at all. So, hmm. either he was spirited away by somebody that, you know, <clears throat> best my skill at finding him, or he's actually more for the wilderness stealth than I thought he was. Well, but still mainstream, I guess. Doesn't want us telling Vexalia about any of this, so I don't know how you want to proceed. We get caught doing stuff in there. I don't know if they're trying to just, I don't know. I, I'm leaving it up to you guys. I'm not good at this kind of... Well, I know we're in good standing with Vexalia. I just, if we seek an audience with her, our cover is most likely easily blown considering how protected she is. It's not just... We would have to essentially seek an audience without her knowing and without anyone else knowing, um, kind of... Hey, Jan, how long does that spell 
that makes us look like, you know, other people last. Oh, what spell? The spell you use that makes us all look like other people. Remember we all look like Brian? Oh, yes, yes. If we all just look like common travelers as we walked, then we wouldn't get recognized as easily. Good. However, the, letter, the letter did say not to seek Exalia. Now, that could very well be a trap. I, uh, I just mean to even just yeah. get in there. Oh, yeah, sure. That, just uh, so we, just we, we don't get recognized. <clears throat> yeah, that guy I'm found us pretty quick. What I was thinking if, is if we were going to trait and get close to Jonda somehow, we would have to more or less a switcheroo on maybe some of his thugs, uh, but then we'd have to encounter his thugs without being caught or without them escaping, uh, and then we could disguise ourselves as, you know, basically hide in plain sight and walk right in. That also could pose problems. I'm not sure how prepared Jaundice is. Um, I also have to kind of lay low. I mean, even though Vexalia knows who I am, and last time we were here, I kind of stuck to the shadows and whatever, just, you know, we were being seen by, by Jaundice or the guard that I kind of went AWOL on. But, uh, yeah, being in Whitestone, regardless, I would like to lay low. So, yeah, I mean, that that's a possibility. We could um, disguise ourselves or just really, really tact. Well, in yeah. reality, it's just you that they know who they don't know true. who myself. True. Well, unfortunately, I mean, or Kongar. Got a bit of a reputation, but we're. I think we're pretty famous right now for saving the the continent and the world. So, yeah. you guys didn't see all the posters when we left town with us, like, drawn all over them. All I know is uh, nobody knows who I am. Fair yeah, enough. It's true. I guess you I'm could have just probably more or less a celebrity in Whitestone, whether it's fame or infamy. Um, people would definitely be looking out for considering that this is my town. And I assume you keep Fenthris on your back as well. Yeah, that too. So well, we could disguise both of you when the time comes as we get closer. Yep, when we get closer. Sure. Well, that's but the for now, we can stay off the main roads, too. Yeah. Yeah, we might as well venture through the, uh, I guess, the, the suburbs, as there probably wouldn't be that much wilderness. I mean, would be wilderness, but not completely, like, untrodden wilderness. Yep. But yeah, staying off the main roads is uh, agreeable. I think that's probably for the best. Uh, you do know that the Parchwood is pretty damn dangerous. Uh, it's, yeah. it's known to ha still be tainted from uh, not only the calamity, but uh, the stay of the Briarwoods uh, 50 years prior. That still kind of taints the land, and there's still some undead going about in the forest, as well as uh, what the western uh, area uh, of Whitestone, the forested area, is best known for is the uh, Grey Renders that are hunted uh, by the Grey Hunt. Yep. What I did for my day job, more or less. Hey. Day. Yeah, it's definitely not advisable. I mean, we are a lot wiser and more so... well-equipped than before, but anything to slow us down would probably be working against us. So All right, we'll... well, maybe when we get yeah, closer. Is. Yeah. Is there so, yeah, we'll... any we'll little more. towns on the way in? Not that you can see that people mostly are protected in the city of Whitestone uh, from what is in this forest. Mm. As you're going through it, it's it's very Ichabod Crane kind of uh, creepy. Foggy mm. and dead. Yeah. If we had a carriage of some sort, then at least we could hide you in there and walk into town, but alas. We could mm. do that. That's, that's also a thing. Uh, you know, you could rent it and we could hide in the back. Providing they didn't check the caravan, but then again, we could also be disguised as well. We enter 
but could be a possibility. It would speed things up, too. Well, I'm sure at that point I could persuade them otherwise. You could yeah. have tried to have rented one in Turst Fields uh, before you left. We could have reconned that. Sure. Yeah. May as well. To, I will... Yeah, otherwise it would have taken us a lot, lot longer, I guess, so yeah. Right. Plus, I would wreck these beautiful boots. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's see. Work smart, not hard. Well, I'm not smart, so... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, none of us are. My, my intelligence is 10. <laughs> Congar's intelligence is 10, minus 9. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going yeah. bad. <laughs> We're going to cowboy this shit, I think. Yep. All right, well, I'll say <laughs> that. Crazy. Five gold pieces huh. for Enough. like a basic rundown ass cart. Uh, for the horses, which are not ah, uh, someone can make a nature check <laughs> slash medicine check. On Both these horses. Us, okay. uh, I, I am, am trained in nature. I guess I can. I have a plus six on nature. So I guess You're I'm better trained. than I am. <laughs> I'm trained in it, but I am not smart. Yeah, give her. Five. That's pretty damn good. Not uh, bad, yeah. Nice. These horses are not looking great. Uh, they're fairly <laughs> emaciated looking, uh, poorly groomed. Uh, you, the, uh, the stable hand's kind of really talking them up. Like, oh, these are the best horses you could find this side of uh, Teldore. <laughs> Absolutely. Best horses, like the best horses you have. The best, the best of the best. Probably uh, better than you can find in Amman or even Western. Yeah. Wow. Barely a meal for a pack of wolves. It's not like huh. a, so. Uh, <laughs> but you're willing to pay for them. I, it, it, is there any way that I could look around? Uh, at any other horses he's got, or is this basically all we've got? Like it's pretty much all you got. Yeah, uh, this not place to look a, a gift down. horse in the mouth, but yeah, you can see they're like corpses of some other horses. They have been uh, torn into by like probably teeth, but also you know, like jagged swords and weapons. The only difference between those and these are standing. <laughs> all right, well, I guess we'll take them if that's all you've got. But, uh, the price you're asking. Let's see. Not like it really matters. <laughs> we're, oh, we're loaded. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know. I'll, I'll give the man what he's asking, but, uh, you know. I'd advise him to, to try not to swindle people. <laughs> Make uh, these horses check. are... Yeah. <laughs> Just as a, as, a, as a verbal tip. Yeah. Uh... But, yeah, it's, that's <laughs> not great. He, <laughs> right. he doesn't care. He knows, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I gotta do what I gotta do. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Horse. Yeah, so whatever. We'll take him, I guess. It seems like it's all he's got if we've looked at all the other horses or, or lack thereof. Maybe we'll do some good for them getting them the hell out of here. So you're gonna get yeah. two horses. Um... Or you can get like a, a full four to pull the car because you can see Congar is kind of heavy. Uh, yeah, we'll take the four. It'll be better timing. And honestly, two of these things might run out of steam by the time we get to the shroud rest. So yeah, they're basically have a, a, ponies. So um, oh, okay, so even yeah, they'll, we'll need more horsepower. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here all night. <laughs> So you got you basically got a deal on the cart. So cart's normally fifteen gold pieces, but he's gonna uh, charge you full price for the ponies. So it's thirty gold pieces each. Thirty. Wow. Well, all right. Well, I think he could do a better price. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Can I do persuasion check? What? Go ahead. Yeah, you're probably better than I'm way better. <laughs> yeah. we got plus twenty-two persuasion. Shit, I won't even talk anymore. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. All right. All right. Fine. <laughs> 20 gold pieces a, a pony, I suppose. 
20 gold pieces a pony? No, 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 no. I think we should be doing 40 gold pieces for all the ponies. That's... that's robbery. It's not robbery at all. It is robbery. What else oh, would you get it. for it? Eh. Especially if they keel over and die. Fine. Certainly look like they might. Fine. You're a good man. You're a good man. Yeah. He takes the gold from you. I flash him a charming smile. We did good. <laughs> you, you can tell that he shows you disdain, but he can't help but <laughs> slightly smile back. <laughs> Shake my head and say 40 for a large dog. Can't <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that that will load everything up. Not like we have much, but uh, yeah. All right, that will knock down down your time quite significantly. I'll say that you guys obviously knew where you're going for this time, so you guys had enough rations for this whole trip. Yeah, and I can always time to anywhere. Time. There's you know we when we camp or if we have to whatever. There's there's no problem finding. That's it's like not even a roll. It's no. No, it's, I've it's been good at that since you, like level you, three. You've merged well. You've merged with a pack animal as well. Yeah, there's yeah. As long as if you can... don't roll a natural one, you're fine. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you guys can easily find food if you need it, or if you just feel like it. Um, but yeah, you guys start taking your cart down the road, and eventually you start to approach Whitestone. Now, you do have some contacts here. You have uh, Seamus Cross. You know, the uh, retired pale guard that you went to his house last time? Yep. Uh, there's Ben Foley, who is still on active duty as a pale guard. Uh, there is Phineas Cole, who's another uh, younger pale guard. And Connie King, who is a, she's a white stone rifleman. Is she the dwarf? Uh, she is a dwarf, yes. Yeah, I think I remember her well. I think had uh yeah it's been a long time i remember talking with a dwarf well we can easily disguise them for eight hours before we get into the city to hide brumal and congar yep yeah we can do that i think of all Oh, of the few people that I still had contact with when I left Whitestone, it's been some time. Seamus, in his old age, was probably one of my closest friends. Um, that is saying the, the old bat's still alive. Um, ben, Phineas. Connie was a bit brash, but she, uh, she could be trusted. Ben was was a duteous member of the uh, the Pale Guard. I'm not sure if his loyalty to the guard is good. Uh, you know, things could have. I could be marred as a, you know, a traitor for running away. away. Yeah. So who knows? But uh, I do I do trust Seamus regardless, uh, and he's retired anyways. He wouldn't care. Um, Connie, I would trust her as well. Well, um, but I think if we can, Coach Seamus might be able to give us a rundown on uh, State of Whitestone. Well, we have eight Maybe. hours from when he changes our appearance, so. So. Yeah. Okay. As you guys get a little bit closer, it's still far enough away that you can't necessarily quite be seen. You start getting closer to the kind of front gates into Whitestone. Uh, it mostly just it's it's kind of like a border gate that just guards uh, the main road going in and out that the most easy passage into Whitestone. It's not like a full kind of gated uh, community. Uh, you see there at the gate uh, one newer uh, pale guard, a little bit younger that you don't recognize, but beside him you see one that you do to your dismay. Uh, Morris DeWitt, also known as Dewey. Uh, he is a uh, probably like 6'5", half-orc. Uh, you know him to kind of cause some degree of trouble. Easily bribed 
probably one of the most corrupt people that you know. Uh, you see a cart uh, leaving the city. It's probably getting closest to nighttime by this point. Then you can see him stop him. Uh, can't really see what they're talking about. Uh, I think you read lips, don't you, Bramal? Yep. Is that? Did... You read lips. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah, I can read lips, providing that it's a language that I can speak, which is pretty much every language that would be <laughs> spoken. So, so. Yep. Uh, so you can kind of see as he's saying something like, uh, uh, before you go, let me check the package inside. Um, you can see the kind of grumbling of the uh, 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 the coach driver. Uh, says, fine. So he starts, uh, like, kind of gives him the shipping manifest. Um, looks it over, kind of peeks inside a couple of the crates and boxes, looks in the side of this nicer chest, and kind of picks out a couple of coins. Says, thank you, that'll be all. And uh, sees some more grumbling, gives back the manifest, and the stagecoach starts to make its way uh, towards you guys. It's uh, Before, as, as we see him um, kind of inspecting the cart in front of us, um, I'm assuming Kongar and I are in the back, Jan is is minding the horses. Yeah, that's fair. Yep, and Jan, before we roll up to the gate, Jan was going to turn us into things. Yep, I think we'll turn us into just looking like, you know, regular peasants, nothing too crazy. Yeah, I'll just do this here. Just... So I'll mention to Jan, um, I'll be like that there, the half-orc on the right. Um, I know him. Uh, not like it really matters, but he uh, kind of uses position to... Uh, Make a little extra on the side, if you know what I mean. He's very, um, tries to intimidate passersby with threats of whatever, incarceration, that sort of thing. Uh, he'll be easy to deal with. Uh, throw him a few points. Uh, he won't bat an eye. Sounds good. Congar starts looking at some coins in his hand, and he's getting, like, he's testing his throwing arm. Just... <laughs> All right. Give him, give him some coin. I'll give him some coin. So are you guys disguising, or are you guys kind of rolling up, trying to be inconspicuous inside the cart? Uh, I'll use uh, um, steaming to disguise us <laughs> to all look like just peasants. Yeah. Okay. If he if he asks or if if he causes any trouble or says that you know he, whatever that will just gold and easy to do. You know, even though we're peasants and he has no reason to, but if for whatever reason he did, he's always looking to, to make a good, few bucks. Good thing we don't have a fancy cart. Yeah. No, you don't. And you don't no. have fancy horses either. No, nope. true. So I guess if we're throwing gold around, then maybe that would... Ah, whatever. We'll see what happens. I'll just <laughs> throw some copper. <laughs> yeah. So as you guys roll up and the other coach passes you, the guy gives you guys barely, barely a glance... Uh, but as you guys make your way up to the gate, you're stopped by, uh, by Dewey. He comes up and says, Ah, well, let's see what you got inside. Okay. I'm gonna just do, like, a persuasion and be like, Ah, oh, we're just trying to get into town to get some supplies for our farm. <sighs> well, I suppose, uh, only half the entrance fee for, uh, folk like you. I'm a pretty, uh, uh, the... I'm giving. I'm merciful. What, what's, the, what's, what's the entrance fee, sir? Uh, two silver pieces. Ooh. But for only poor peasants, we, we've only got one copper. <laughs> well, I'll take it. All right, so I hand it over, and while I'm handing it over, I'm going to do a sleight of hand to nick his purse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> All right. Do you got lucky? <laughs> it's, it's yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I try to make a. I mean, I could try to make a distraction and and shiver and kind of like pull uh, like a, you know, kind of a shawl Not around my shoulders. Oh, oh, you're in the back. <laughs> oh, I know. But if you we'll see, see what happens, we'll see, like, yeah. we'll see what happens. Yep. Papa, are we gonna eat this week? <laughs> That's oh, not funny. You son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> yep, wow. campaign's over. 
<laughs> Turn us in. Head. You're under arrest. <laughs> oh, where are you going with the, with those fingers? Well, uh, I just I'm gonna use a deception and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize what I was grabbing. Oh, yeah! Wow. Ah, I see your crit and raise you a crit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Wow. Those are yeah. pretty good rolls. Those are very good rolls. We haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty hot. If I offer you another copper piece, would you let us pass without too much I thought trouble? you only had one copper piece. Well, you know, I have to He's gonna try have and keep as much to me. me as possible. I'll use a little persuasion on that one, too. Fine. Just get your hands off my fucking purse. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> <Trying> exactly. <laughs> no, 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 now he's uh, definitely going. Yeah, girl at disadvantage, like hard at disadvantage. <laughs> give, give him the two copper. Yeah, give him the two copper. Well, <clears throat> good luck in the city. I'll be watching you. Ah, thank you, kind sir. Man, as you guys kind of roll off, he's still kind of staring at you, kind of scratching his head. <laughs> Balls on that one. Hell yeah. Could I uh, do like a, a stealth check and throw something at <laughs> No. Ooh, really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he handles dead. being... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> handles being put down about as good as a Tesh. <laughs> so, you guys roll into <clears> the city. <throat> and, roll into the city. Uh, as you guys are kind of going through and stuff you see uh you you pass what appears to be some sort of a crime scene uh the road is blocked off with barrels um to choose which one. um somebody just roll a d6 for evens or odds for me who wants to i can do it i got go for it <laughs> evens, both evens of us. Both. <laughs> wow confirm that nope no nah, whatever it's even. <laughs> <laughs> uh best out of three so let's see here there it is uh the street is dimly lit uh, you see two guards standing outside of a house. There is a pool of blood on the outside. Uh, is it night, it's nighttime? Yeah, night? yeah it's, pretty, or... it's pretty much nighttime by this point. Okay. Um, but there appears to be... Uh, one guard that you do recognize, a uh, standing guard, uh, Ben Foley. Uh, he's standing there, probably like kind of sandy-haired, short, ha short sandy hair, uh, middle-aged, um, kind of has like this a uh, darker, almost, uh, uh, almost Marquesian tan. But you've known him to be born and raised in Whitestone. Bye. <laughs> All right. So I guess um, we're we probably parked the carriage and we're just walking. <clears throat> town now i'm assuming yeah, yeah you could have parked it where would you, where would you park it where would you choose to park i'm it? assuming there's like usually stables right at the, the the mouth of the town usually that's how that sort of thing is set up eh? would you uh yeah there is but there's other, some other stables and other places uh, more higher class some lower class um would we'll you stick park... to the lower class one yeah there's uh it's got a middle class one uh near the gates uh, where it gets the most traffic uh, lower class would be kind of closer to I do believe, the great fields. Wish me here. Want to do middle class? Yeah, we wouldn't want to. We probably wouldn't want to check them upper class. I mean, honestly, we don't really care about the caravan and the, and the horse at all, yeah. anyways. So uh, that... uh, we don't want to give ourselves. We're not going to deck these. Well, that's why I was thinking lower class ones on legs into the lavish stable because they'd be like. Uh, where did you get all that money? Like, it'd be hmm. yeah. No, I was be... I was thinking the lower class one just to fit with the yeah, category. exactly lower or maybe middle, but yeah, lower class is 
yeah. we don't. The lower class one is more kind of uh, off, uh, off to the eastern side of uh, Whitestone, uh, by the Grayfield, uh, which is the graveyard. Uh, the middle class one is closer to the gates, uh, which is also well within view of Dewey. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely go to the lower class one. I think. Yeah, I agree. Yep. All right. Uh, so easily enough, uh, lower class as it is, it's mostly just small. It looks like uh, the stable land actually really cares about all the horses and takes care of them with whatever they've got. Um, they end up taking them in for... I'll be right back. Hi guys, love listening in. For sure. So obviously he's going to want to charge a fee for us to take the horses. Yeah, um, I'm just looking it up right now. There it is. I'm going to try to convince him, be like, if I give you these horses, will you take better care of them than the previous owners? Uh, you see this, like, old man kind of uh, crotchety, but just very kind face. Just, uh, 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 of course, uh, they look fairly malnourished, but I can see what I can do. I mean, uh, well, They are. We're, the person we purchased them from clearly wasn't taking care of them properly, so... I'll take them off your hands. Uh, I don't have much money to give you, I'm afraid, but... Uh, no, that's okay. As long as you take care of them, sir, I would greatly appreciate it. Well, very well. I can always use some more horses. So he takes them, kind of starts to unhook them from the cart, and kind of parks the cart in the corner. Now I'll leave this for you when you decide to come back. Sounds good. Thank you. Um... So, you guys park it, you, got, you lose your horses, uh, and you guys start walking around the, around the city, uh, looking like peasants, yep. and uh, do you guys approach this crime scene? Uh, I'm going to let Brumal take lead on this one, because sure. yep, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay back. <laughs> a very large well, I... peasant. Yeah, I can make him look any size, so he looks. Well, it doesn't really matter too. Like you could be a, a Goliath peasant. Good. Goliaths are all over the, the this place. Like the it's the north, the mountains. You know, mm -hmm. you, I'm sure there's tons of Goliaths in Whitestone. Uh, but seeming only makes him go up and down like a foot. Yeah, so it'd be a tall peasant. Yeah, I could be six foot instead of seven. Mm. Yep. There you go. So yeah, I'll um, I'll kind of like. You know, looking, trying to act as disheveled as I look, I'll kind of, uh, you know, approach quietly and timidly. Um, excuse me, sir, uh, what happened here? Is Whitestone a safe place to be right now? So you kind of get up to about the barrels and the, even Ben tells you, like, All right, sir, uh, just uh, back off a little bit there. This is a ongoing crime scene investigation. But uh, you can make a persuasion check to try to get him to give you some information. Persuasion. Can I make a persuasion check. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Like you could ask the question, but I guess yeah. Um, whatever, I'll do a persuasion. Yeah. Not great, but. That's not bad. Ah, we say, we say, girl inside. Uh, uh, she had some of this, uh, uh, some sued, and up. Uh, He's kind of loose in her mind, having a bad reaction. Killed a mother and father on the inside. Jesus. And I kind of scratch my head sued. Is that some sort of... What is that? It's a, it's a type of... Uh, type of narcotic that's made with a, a residuum that's uh, normally used as a component for spell casting. It's a, it's pretty well known that it's manufactured here in Whitestone, um, but uh, the suit is a uh, illegal narcotic. And, uh, See, what what does it look like? So I know to stay away from it. I don't want any of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just basically, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to get is uh, where where they actually manufacture it, where it's going. Yeah, uh, no. not a good. So. Uh, well, uh, 
I clearly look like somebody that's used suit. Many <laughs> <times>. <laughs> yeah. I think that we'll just keep that to ourselves uh, for now. Um, but you should be along your way there, sir. It's getting right. quite late. Sorry, sorry to bother you. I trouble. Just go ask some bum where he can get some sued. <laughs> 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 that's, that's that's the next yep. plan. Scratch Welcome yeah. to Leduc. You want some meth? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything to, to Ben. Obviously, mm -hmm. to, I know he's still here and he's still doing his duty. So uh, you know, I can I can. I mean, I believe his story, even though my persuasion wasn't very high. Um, I could I could do like a, a kind of a visual investigation of myself, yeah. but I don't want to start trouble or, or get anywhere closer to the scene so that's that's fine i'll let's see assume that that's just going on i'm gonna assume that you guys are just down the road behind him sounds about right yeah yeah okay. i guess like yeah. i'm within i'm within sight just watching boom and there's jim crow and there's Kamal. By the cart. I mean, by the, the barrels. There's Kongar. There's Figgis. Boom. That's Are you switching maps, or? Yep. Oh, there we go. So, let's see i'm pretty sure you can yeah so on the streets you can get a general visual inspection uh through the windows and you can kind of see that there's appears to be a body uh blood stains just everything's destroyed inside through the window okay um does it i guess i could do an investigation visually but uh, does it look like you know he said that it was a, a girl that killed her parents does it look like the kind of damage that a girl could have done or is it like chaos it looks like utter chaos like more than just a teenage girl could have done right so this could have been like a shakedown or i could do i guess i'll do an investigation check like that or uh, from there is that just what i see that's just kind of what i see without rolling use your senses yeah, that's what you see without rolling right okay. so i have my doubts on ben's story then uh, this looks like, um, what about like footprints through the blood and stuff like that? I'm assuming there's more than one set of footprints. It's hard to see unless you get into the house. I guess, yeah. Well. Use your animal senses as well. Your I sneak team. up uh, behind no. Brumal and go, do you want to get in the house? Blah. Thinking about it. I, uh, I don't, the, the more that I linger here, the, the less I believe story that I was told of a young girl murdering her parents under the influence of Sue going to assume something else is going here. Um, so if we went around the house like the west around, is there any other... I'm assuming that like the, all the entrances are guarded. Uh, it looks like this the front entrance is guarded. Uh, you go to the back, it doesn't appear to be like any other actual entrances, but there are windows. Windows that are out of sight of the guards. Yep. Okay. Now, on the roof, what does it look like? Is there a chimney coming up for where the fireplace would have been? Or yep, yep. There's a chimney coming up. Ah, excellent. So I kind of give them all a look. I'm like, well, I can get you inside. Chimney, it is, I guess. How about we walk over to? The alley here, where <laughs> we're not yeah, out, of, out of the yeah. Okay. I mean, I could I could sleight of hand a window open. Uh, yours is probably better than mine. My yeah. sleight of hand is, but well, I kind of see as you guys both walk over, uh, Ben and the other guard kind of giving you a, a, a suspicious side eye. <laughs> as you guys I could out of sight. easily go up the roof and into the chimney and open a dimensional door for you. Also works. Probably a lot more guaranteed methods that I was. Or, of course, go inside and 
keep watch at the door while you open a window. Congar, what are we you could doing? Do I'm just keeping a look at outside for any super suspicious things, waiting for somebody to call me. You look Before... incredibly suspicious. You're standing in a <laughs> big straw hat, just like suspenders, just kind of standing farmer. there. Yeah, just looking back and forth on the street, just standing <laughs> by yourself at night. And one of the guys looks over at you, he's like, Hey! What are you doing over there? Loitering? We'll cut it the fuck out! Oh. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to live. Can I stay at your house? Actually, can you give me some directions? Like, For Pelly's sake! I, I pull out a blank piece of paper. <laughs> While he's doing this, that's probably a good distraction for us exactly. to get it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, but as once he's passed, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll do a sleight of hand. Open the window. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. My sleight of hand is eleven. So uh, plus eleven. My, my sleight of hand is plus nine. Okay. Oh, I, I Wait, guess I could, you see, my right. mom. My mom used to live up here. And there I'm, there you go. <laughs> I'm just pointing at this blank piece of paper to the guard. You open the window. <laughs> Can you use some stealth to get in? Yeah, I guess okay. uh, I'll stealth as well. Two stealths. Stealth. Come on, low. Uh, Not as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, crush and burn. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> so, as the guards kind of like slightly humoring you, like, listen. You can't just be standing around out here near a crime scene. Yeah, it makes you look pretty guilty. Yeah, that is all I'm saying. Yeah. I just don't know where, like, can you tell me? There's nothing see, on that parchment. There's nothing on that parchment at all. You can't look see. Look at this. You, There's nothing there. You can't hey, see this? Do you have, uh, are you okay? You got, uh, how you been doing, uh? Are you okay? Wait, were you in that building where you said a bunch of drugs were and... Now you can't see this map? Alright. Are you okay? Hey, I mean, uh, I sleep on the ground, but... Right, this guy looks pretty suspicious. I, because oh, I, I asked if you were okay? I my in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna uh, watch I... the door while uh, Bramal does his investigation. <laughs> so, well, so, that's okay, <laughs> okay, I'll... I'll go find my mom's house, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for the help. So, it's which okay. way's north? It's okay. You could... All right. So, Brumal <laughs> and Jerry. <Yep. laughs> uh, as you're going around, you see the uh, inside of the, the interior is just destroyed. You find three bodies. Uh, one of a uh, middle-aged, uh, probably almost senior man, a uh, middle-aged woman, and that of a uh, teenage girl that has had... Uh, an almost slight mutation. Now you see that her uh, actually medicine or investigation check. Investigation, as I get advantage, and that's a crit. There you go. Uh, you do see that uh, she has slightly enlarged uh, incisors. Um, in her mouth, uh, there's a slight, almost silvery drool that is uncharacteristic of uh, human saliva. Uh, you see that her fingernails have elongated slightly. And beside her uh, is the familiar, uh, kind of greenish looking uh, stone, uh, or kind of uh, powder, uh, of sood. That adds up. That all adds up to me. However, with your investigation, uh, it, it looks somewhat off. But you can't quite piece it. Good stuff. It's, got, it's the stuff with chili pee in it. <laughs> <laughs> chili pee, yo. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the blue <clears throat> stuff. Put a little chili pepper uh, in there. Yeah. Okay, um, so it looks like, dude, looks like there is 
formula behind this suit. So, looks as like a the part-time uh, narcotics user yourself. Uh, yeah. Sued. <laughs> uh, and being somebody that's experienced with it, you know, through job that I used to have, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, mostly used by Arcanists uh, for the most part. Uh, can give you some a little extra boost, more concentration, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more power when you need it. Uh, this is completely unheard of and uncharacteristic, uh, but you do see the occasional kind of scorch mark in places, as if like maybe like a, a kind of a weak fireball was thrown or something. But her mutation is very odd. Like it has more magical property. And yeah, Chemical and she property. clearly has a lot of strength. Or had a lot of strength. Yeah. Okay, so we got a got a BOW here. The all right, so the blood out front is questionable. Um, out front of the house, so that could whatever. Uh, I don't really have the chance that, but um, does it look like the girl actually did the murdering? Like there's only the one. Or the three sets of prints, I guess. See if your uh, feral instincts will help. Different blood, whatever. Yeah, I could do it too. Yeah, uh, with um, your investigation check and with your, uh, definitely with uh, your sense of smell, uh, you can see that there is traces of skin and hair underneath her fingernails uh, from both her mother and father. As well as a oh. nether... Uh, unknown uh, individual. Uh, as hey. you smell it, kind of smells like, uh, like to like tobacco smoke and ale, uh, a bit of kind of like steel and sweat. Okay, right. probably dwarven. <laughs> Very likely. Okay. Who knows? It could be, but uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on that. So the 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 third uh, DNA sample, I guess, that's unknown, and I'm going to focus on the smell of that. Well, okay, make a try to job. you know, yeah. So like basically, it's like you know, smelling a rag. You know, you put it in a dog's nose, and okay, go find it, right? Mm -hmm. That I'm just gonna focus on that smell, and and then if we were to leave this place, I might have a a nose for it. Leave, but I can percent. Conger is going to try to make food. <laughs> what? Well, Conger's <laughs> brought out the smash pot. <laughs> All right. So uh, the smell leads you to the smattering of blood outside the door. Somebody was attacked, killed, and got away. Um, that also is. I guess we could try to find tracks away from the scene guards haven't noticed or aren't saying about. But yeah, that's that's a possibility, I guess. Or the body was... Or the, the, the victim was killed there and the body was... It's hard to tell. Okay. So, I think I've got everything I need. Um, I don't think really any... Um, people just look like common folk. So, uh, they're not like uh, aristocrats. They look like middle class. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I've got. What... It looks like, based off the evidence in the place, uh, there was. It looks like there's like. Uh, some evidence of general domestic abuse in the household. Um, you can tell that they lived a not amazing lifestyle, but they have a good, like, they're kind of house poor in a way. They have a really right. large place yep. to live, but uh, they're uh, they're cramped. Yeah. The house looks nice on the outside, but what's in it shows their their wealth, I guess. Sense, yeah. So that could have been, I mean, could have been a lot of things. Could have been a troubled young mind, which is very common. 
decides to speak out against her parents, try a new drug, gets the best of her, loses control, and ends up murdering her own folk. Not the first time I've seen that. Um, okay, well, I think, yeah, like I said, yeah, I think we're we're good here. Um, I don't think there's really any, any other clues. I mean, I could I could go around the place uh, and look in the the bedroom, but I'm assuming that would have been part of my initial investigation. So. Oh yeah, you crit that one. Yeah. So. So I guess I think we're good. So I'll kind of give a little hand signal to Jan and be like, "Hey, I think we're here." Okay. We'll slink out. Yep. Link. Slink out. Uh, and Kongar, you pull the smash pot out of nowhere. No, I went around the corner and I'm like. Okay. The, I'm the only one around. He told me to go away. So I kind of <laughs> went around the corner, sat down, pulled out the smash pot, and waited a minute or two and started... Actually, actually fuck it, I don't need to attune to it because I'm not trying to use it to actually cast anything. So I'm just going to start cooking. Uh, well, you You're would... just going to start cooking in the middle of the street? And without attuning... You wouldn't you you wouldn't be able to actually like make it heat up. Oh, okay. So I'm just gonna sit there and see if I can wait long enough to attune to it. Then just sitting there staring at an empty pot. Yeah. Uh, as you guys come out from around the alleyway, you see that Kongar has disappeared. Just like right around the corner, but yeah, <laughs> Brumo would be able to smell me. <laughs> oh yeah, easily yeah. enough. And you guys make your way another or on the other farther corner. Uh, you guys did put together some things from the crime scene, but you didn't get the whole story, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect him to tell a commoner the, the entire story of what happened, you know, and that sort of... It's, a, it's on a need-to-know basis, right? So... Um, <laughs> that's why I decided to... That I am need-to-know, and I'll just get my own information. Hmm. So, so th there is other ways of getting information from. Them. Yep. You guys found me, so I'd just be like, "Wow, yep. really missed their kills." Uh, zone of truth. That was pretty cool. Just... We would have to we would have to approach things a lot differently if yeah. Zerakil were here. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the the human cacophony, just walking around. Yeah. <laughs> Loudly. That'd be, he'd be a better distraction, just trying to be stealthy, probably, than Gongar, <laughs> acting like a, an idiot farmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, that guy could not read my map. I think he's retarded. <laughs> All right, well, um, I suppose we should try to find where this suit is being manufactured, or at least dealt. That could be probably our next major point of interest. Just kind of going off you. what that courier said. Um, I just have a gut feeling that I should trust what that note says. Whether it was my son or not that, that pitched that note. Um, even if it's a trap, I mean, I'm, I'm very, very confident there are many traps being laid for us in Whitestone. So, <laughs> uh, I wish them I would. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if you at least expect a trap, well, you know, the whole fool me twice doesn't really count, does it? Yeah. Um, I shrug. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, maybe we should go to the 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 areas of less repute, maybe the the ghettos of Whitestone, and and start looking around for. I mean, some... I could I could cook something if we had like a potion of sleep or something. I could cook something and give some to the guards if I made it smell good. I'm sure they'd eat it. We now need now to we find out where this suit is coming from because I have a feeling that that's, that's where... We, we can get access to some. I might be able to identify where it was made or at least how. Exactly. Yeah, that too. So maybe we'll go to the, uh, the slums and uh, ask around and... Uh, before our time runs out anyways. I know this this spell doesn't last forever, so... Yeah, you, so uh, we... you've used about two hours of it so far. Okay, so that's that's my idea anyways, unless you've got a better one, but uh, if 
finding the source of the sood. My idea um, is literally going and uh, I'm just going to start shaking up hobos. So... If we can find a dealer, which would likely be, you know, working for the syndicate, regardless of the level that he's working under, um, could probably give him a browbeat and tell him, or or force him to tell us where it's coming from. This might be a, an interrogation setup. We might need somewhere to actually interrogate this thug as well. That's that's my plan anyway. I'm find the dude, the find the dealer, interrogate the dealer, and go from there. So, yeah. I mean, unless you guys have a different direction, I think that might be... That's my skill set anyway. Well, so. I could do it a little quieter if required, but yes. Yep. All right, so I guess we'll head to the the shanty part of town, or yeah. places where I would probably know where the ghettos are. Like you know, there'd be lots of trouble there. It's like where where's the LRT station of Whitestone? <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'll, we'll just go there. And yeah, where's there's, Commonwealth? <laughs> yeah, the meth, the meth will find us. <laughs> As you guys kind of begin to make your way into the uh, more less reputable places of Whitestone. A familiar place catches your eye. Vermal. The Crooked Rook. Uh, it's a... The place is still standing, is it? Yeah, it's the tavern uh, that you know that used to be, or might still be, the HQ of Jonas Jones. Uh, on the outside, you see uh, strange wreaths over the still kind of shabby, dusty windows. Uh, you see a gathering of people that are dressed in dark clothing uh it's solemn uh it looks like the lights are kind of dimmed on the inside there's not the usual kind of raucous interior of bar fights happening and loud kind of crappy music yelling laughing seems to be fairly quiet all right and... well i've definitely seen this place a lot livelier even when I was here against my will. Do we check it out? Uh, I think it's a good place to go on. I'm relatively familiar with it. So it's, it's a start anyway. Sure. I could play some music and entertain the folk. Yeah, I might make a few bucks. <laughs> so, uh, All right. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll head on into the old rook and. Um, so it's pretty quiet. There's quite a few people, obviously. Yeah. As you approach and enter the Crooked Rook, yeah, you see there several people that were standing outside the Crooked Rook kind of made their way inside. They're donned in dark clothing. You can tell uh, that these citizens are all in mourning. Wreaths of vine and lily are placed over the outside of, the, of windows with curtains drawn within. Entering the tavern, the dim candlelight on the walls, thick silence... And occupants dressed in black make the room feel heavy. Old paintings depicting landscapes and unknown people of import. Dusty swords resting on sun-dried plaques. And the smell of stale ale remind you that this place is more commonly a place for sad drunks and people of ill repute. At the front of the tavern, for Maul, you notice a familiar figure. Jaundice Jones. Right here. Yep. His hands are folded Ooh, look at over that each fucking... other. Uh, hands pinching a wide-brimmed leather hat. The top of his head reveals the all-too-familiar skullet, accompanied by fine, straightened, dark hair, the same sickly yellow tone to his oily skin. And next to him, standing upright, is a simple coffin built from old, weathered wood. A firm kick could easily punch a hole into a set of its planks. And you see, as Jonas begins to speak to everybody, My friends... As he wipes away this tear that... I'm not really sure there was a tear. It is with a heavy heart that we are gathered here today to honor the passing of my dear beloved Tawny Smith. As you know, was a lovely woman, beautiful. But even Pelor himself cannot stop the misfortunes of pestilence. She and I had one son, alas, who has since turned to criminality and turns my heart some nights to think that perhaps it was these acts that made her ill. The illness of a broken heart that despite my love and aid could not remedy. As you know, in her state of mind as a mother, 
She only desired to see her son one last time. She walked away out into the cold of the parchwood and lost her life to render. This is why we will not be having a formal viewing, such as just wipes another tear away. Starts to kind of choke up, but you kind of sense his uh, performance is faulty, such as the render appeared to take umbrage with her beautiful face. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please excuse me and enjoy the refreshments. Uh, bread and peanuts on the bar. Ale is half rice. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts to walk his way off. Conger's grinding his teeth. Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. Well, I mean, Connie was like... stronger than that. From what I remember, I haven't seen her in years, but I render... She wouldn't be there anyways. Anyway, it's just because I know her, obviously. This is... His 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 front was for his men and, and the, the denizens of the tavern, but I, uh... I, I'm more wary now than I was before we got in here. Um, something's up. He might even know that we're coming. Uh, but yeah, either way, um, I'll still try to you know, we'll move in and, like, like you know, there's an empty table right in the front here. We'll just, uh, we'll grab a drink and uh, maybe we'll ask. Well, well, actually, we'll just, uh, yeah, get some drinks, get some, you know, basic grub, I guess. Yeah. And I'll try to eavesdrop on some of the conversations around the uh, the tavern before we um, start probing, I guess. And I keep a, a very, very fixed eye on jaundice. I uh, still here. I look at I look for the biggest crony dude just wandering around this bar, and they just kind of like whisper to uh, to Jan that if like tomorrow if we're gonna like look like anyone, I want to look like that one, and I just <laughs> gesture with my head to like the biggest guy. You see, the biggest guy is this kind of almost kind of matches your stature your rippling biceps kind of sitting over at this table right over here yeah that one him <laughs> really you want to look as ugly as that one i mean if we're gonna try to you know do things with the stuff later what ah, well, yeah the vicious. things for now let's enjoy the refreshments you see a few of the other patrons kind of eyeing you up a little bit, kind of suspiciously. Kind You guys seem to be a very low class and out of place here, more so than anyone else. Yeah, and we'll 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 take the hint, and we'll kind of just keep why to ourselves. We, why don't we break the ice and buy around on the house? Just just gesture to Brumal. Yeah, well, I don't know if if. I don't think we look like people that could afford I want to some buy money. around. Want some money. Want some, want some money. We could say that. Jan could pull it off. You see, yeah, uh, I suppose. John is kind of speaking to the uh, to the tavern, uh, to, uh, to the bartender there. Very kind of old man. Uh, kind of like whispering right in his ear. Kind of like hushed tones. His uh, mouth is covered by his hand. Kind of I'll, I'll, I'll stroll over to the bar while you know he's talking and, and excuse me sir could, could i have uh, three rounds please he kind of breaks off from jonas and jonas kind of makes his way over to the peanuts and kind of sits and pretends to sob a little kind of eat a peanut and kind of wipe away nothing from his eye this oh, yes, <laughs> right away and kind of pulls out three tankards one kind of looks a little bit ugh. Uh, and just fills it up with just some nondescript ale, kind of hands them over. His hands are shaking <laughs> as he comes to bring it to you. Kind of pushes the loaf of bread out of the way. There you go. That's uh, one copper per ale. All right, I'm going to hand him the, uh, the three coppers and then kind of slide one over and say, get one for the gentleman there that seems to be mourning. Um... He's more of a wine drinker. 
cry running about a silver piece. You don't want to uh, insult a man of his stature. Uh, he goes by uh, James Smith. Hmm, I, I don't know him. We're, we're just folk that are coming through town, and we were seeing how we were stopping for a drink and perhaps some food. I didn't realize that there was something going on here. We just saw the place and decided to stop in. Oh, well, but uh, unfortunately, a silver piece is more than I can afford at this time. Understandable. But, uh, Please, please give him my condolences. I will. Yes. Thank you, sir. I'll leave the extra copy there for him. Okay. He takes it. And brings the rings back over. And he just kind of turns and looks toward uh, Jonas, and Jonas clearly heard your conversation. Just like gives a nod towards the bartender, and the bartender nods back, and that's it. Kind of like a, a, a silent nod of respect to you for the condolences. But hey, so to you. <laughs> I guess I will. Uh, yeah, I'll basically just look around the room um, and see if there's, you know, because there's there's people talking at tables randomly. See if I can't pick up any information. Like they're they're probably going to be talking about Connie or you know not understanding what actually happened or you know whatever whatever they might be talking about. Oh, John, this is whatever, whatever. So, uh, make a perception check. the quality of conversation. Very good. Uh, there's some conversation about from some uh, how Tawny will be missed. Uh, uh, old Jaundice, and they don't even call him uh, James Smith, uh, really, really took a liking to her and some whisperings about how she was probably pregnant with his child. Uh, probably still do, and how it's sad, how she kind of just walked out the parch, but and some others are like, why would she just walk out of the parch? She seems completely fine, but, you know, I'll just, let's just roll with it, and some are like, Shh, just be quiet, like, you don't want them to hear you. Um, other ones are kind of aren't saying, like, it's a pretty fucking cheap casket, isn't it? For, uh, alright. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. For somebody that's so dear to him, right? We already know that, you know, he's a man of particular stature, as been told by the bartender, so... Like, even if we were complete strangers, we would already think something is kind of weird. Oh, okay. So I guess these people don't really know... I mean, I could... I can keep doing... I suppose I could actually go up and, and ask people, but... Um... Maybe I'll do that. Boy, just what's all the fuss about? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Is I'll um, one? I'm not gonna no. yet. Well, because no. Congar, I, I was, I was just uh, <laughs> giving Brumal ideas. What's the purple thing in the top corner and the thing that looks like it's puking? Uh, those are some gentlemen that uh seem to be a little bit more a higher class than the rest of the uh, rabble. Some in uh, Arcanist robes, some in dark leathers. Uh, you can kind of see the slight glint of very nice polished weapons. Daggers. Uh, some carrying staves and wands. Damn. Dibs. Almost everybody seems to be armed in here, to some degree. Uh, the one big guy that you seem to be taking to liking to has a, a big great axe at his side, just kind of leaning up against the table as he's knocking back ale after ale. Hmm. You hear some yeah. in the in the back in the kitchen. Somebody's mulling around back there. I'll follow your lead. Okay, well, I'll, I'll kind of just like... Pick up anything on... Uh... Oh, what's your passive perception again, Vermont? Six. You hear this kind of like slight like <laughs> from the floorboards below. <laughs> just a minute, I'm back. I just gotta see something happy. I'll be right back. 
Sorry, I didn't quite hear what you were, what the noise for the floorboard was. It's just like some kind of a feminine, uh, muffled kind of yell. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, kind of raise a brow to that a little bit, and I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll um, kind of just hint. Kongar and Jan kind of like beh hidden behind my tankard. I'll kind of just point down and I'll kind of just lower my head and say something I hear that. Hmm. I didn't quite hear it. I was busy eyeing that, that great axe. God, that's a great axe. What is the, uh, like, as I kind of glance around the room, are we being watched? Like, are we, are, are is everybody just kind of doing their own thing, drinking, kind of just talking, whatever? Or is there, are we getting a lot of, like, you know, stink eye from people or, or getting, otherwise? Like, a quarter of the, of the tavern you're getting stink eye from. Yeah, I figured we'd be out of place here because these guys are all probably syndicate or whatever. Yeah, particularly from the more darkly clothed uh, individuals. Yeah, with by the, the entrance. Yeah. It, yeah. I got a hint of where we're going. Would you like a little bit of a distraction? Do you want me to punch Jan? It's almost like punching a Tesh, but not quite as satisfying. There's a I really, well, I really want to turn my face to Tesh's and smile. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a little too obvious, though. I will literally just punch you out. Right. There's <laughs> also a, uh, like a ugh, pungent kind of, uh, kind of like uh, sea salt and rust uh, and just gross decay, kind of wafting, and you can kind of, it's the smell coming from the coffin, and Brimal can smell this due to his feral senses. Right. Something that does not smell like a corpse. Oh, it but definitely something smells else. like a corpse, for sure. Oh, okay. Choking shit. Um, okay, so... Yeah, it being... Well, if, it, if it's that corpsey, then... Well, who knows. Um, either way, I think the coffin is a stunt. I'm more concerned with how to get to the basement unseen. Maybe we can go from the outside. You can go for uh, a piss. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to walk outside. Uh, just nonchalantly. <clears throat> um, well, while he's doing that, I'm going to walk over to the bar and kind of be like, I'll be right back, gentlemen. Or whatever. I'll just, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I'll walk out and then, yeah. I'll try and get the barkeep's attention. Okay. They're like, well, sir, um, the room seems rather um, somber, and perhaps they could use a little bit of uh, entertainment to try and help soothe the spirits a little bit. If if you have some instruments around, I could. I'm not badly talented with an instrument. I could maybe play some music for them. Uh, we don't have much for instruments. song of some sorts um, please well, be my guest as long as it's within good taste perhaps if it's in good taste then I could get a, a free drink after we'll see how your performance stands first excellent so I'm going to uh, you know kind of yonder up to the, the, the front over here and start singing uh a hymn of, uh, you know, like kind of remorse and sadness, but yet a little bit more try and lift the spirits of everybody. These old bones just ain't what they used to be. <laughs> um, performance check? This is going to be a hard performance check, which uh, it's going to be, I think, DC 20, because it's, this is a pretty tough room. Yeah, DC yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah. DC 20, okay. So I'm do performance check. You succeed. Um, you gather everybody's attention. Uh, even the, uh, the chef kind of comes out, uh, kind of washing a dish. Um, 
Yeah, people kind of like uh, start to kind of like move from their seats a little bit, finding a better place to sit, uh, to watch and everything. Uh, and yeah, uh, everybody just kind of gets in the moment. They song is going to last for a good three to four minutes. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Hey, and yeah, I guess while the song is playing, I'm kind of just. I'm just surveying the perimeter, just kind of walking around, not looking like I'm surveying the perimeter, but, you know, just kind of walking around. I might just fake a piss against the side of the building or something, that uh, sort of thing. There are uh, outhouses outside, if you don't need to just piss outside. Hello, uh, I mean, nothing stops anybody. So. Right, so yeah, I'll pretend I go in there, whatever, look around. Yeah, just do a perimeter check, basically, and uh, not looking ambiguous. Maybe I'll light the, the pipe a little bit and just, you know, take in some of the night air and yeah, that so, sort of thing. Make it look like I'm not investigating. You know, like around here you got... Um... Basically looking for like a cellar door or, uh, you know, that sort of sunken windows, whatever. Uh, you just see there are windows going in this way. Uh, you see beds uh, that you can uh, rent for the night. And just looking through the windows, they're not individual rooms. They're just like dividers. And you have dressers, but there's no doors. And there's some people already sleeping. Uh, you gather there's probably like a few beds available still. Um... But there was another door kind of making its way lower down that you assume that goes to the basement uh, from the uh, the bed area. Hey, but that's... where Where is that door? Sorry? Uh, that would be right over here. Hey, on the windows. inside, I guess, yeah. yeah. So the... From my guess, the only way to the basement is through... Through there, I yeah. guess. Through there, rent rent a, a bed, or you can go from the outside through the one of the two windows. Well, the, okay, there's, so there's sunken windows like for the basement then. Oh no, not for the basement. No, they they go into the bed area right over here. Okay, so, right. You can see this window, and I think, uh, yeah, that is the only window there. So yeah, to get the basement, from my understanding of the architecture of the building, would have to. Be through that door to the, like the southeast of the building there on the inside. Yeah, or this window. Oh yeah, I guess through the window and yeah, right. To okay. The wall. <clears throat> to the yeah, quest. to the window, to the walls. <laughs> Hello. And yeah. Well, and it looked like everybody in that room was sleeping. Yes, to the best of your knowledge. Okay. Just keep using oh, that barrel sense as hard as you can and wait for it to evolve. Yeah. So, there's... I'll, I'll come back to the table. Yeah, I'm at the table there. Uh, so, once Jan's done his song, I guess, I'll, I'll wait for him to finish the performance, and then I'll kind of... I'll... His performance was really good, so I'll, I'll get, like, really excited and start, like, clapping. Uh... You probably know, don't want to cheer. Start clapping. Yeah. Uh, one of the other guys, like over here at one of these tables, kind of gets up and start clapping, and the other guy just like puts a hand on his shoulder, like no, stop that. And the other guys just kind of like stare at you with this like just terrible, just kind of really perturbed stare, like stop. <laughs> oh, like you're you guys celebrate, life. you guys celebrate life different. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But they did gonna... appreciate the song. And already you see the uh, uh, the bartender already put up a, a free ale. All right. Well, I could uh, kind of look over to Brumal and kind of like ask without saying anything if he wants me to do another one to keep distracting them. I think Brumal's outside doing his thing. No, he's back, yeah, he's back at the table. Yep. Oh, okay. So cool. I'll just, uh, just kind of like do the, the wave, like the pass wave and... and basically just signal to come over to the table and I'll try to explain what I what I think we should do next. Alright, so I kind of 
bow to my audience and go over to the bar and grab my drink and thank the barkeep and go back over and sit down and continue drinking. So people are starting to kind of peer out a little bit and go inside. So oh, if it's if it's not um yeah, if if staying in here Okay, well I guess if they're emptying out then that that might be it be, might be better to stay in here than to to explain what I want to do. I, I was thinking go outside, but going out and coming in, going out and coming in might make it look inconspicuous. So I'll just say um so I think only access to the basement. I'm obviously saying this very discreetly and as quietly as possible without drawing any attention. Um I think the best way to the basement is to where the um, dormitories, kind of the dorm rooms, I guess. I believe there's a basement access through there. You did I... not fuck her. You did no. Yeah. <laughs> I like don't. A lot of people, it's like look toward you, like, all right, shut up. <laughs> oh. I just like Keep put my down. hand in my head, just shake my head. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, Congo just like rubs back with say, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, good story over here. You see that uh, bartender looks a little bit kind of worried, like like just like kind of keeping his head bowed and like he's just cleaning a, a, a tankard. The stories you so must hear. We can stealthily, if possible, get into that dorm room. We could either rent beds. And basically just call it for the evening, which might work. Or we could go outside, try to sneak in through the dorm basement. Um, I have no idea what's in the basement. I don't think there's any way to find out without being prepared for the worst. Um, well, we also... We could, we could just wait out the night. Maybe, maybe the place will empty out a little more and we could just, you know... All I know is if we sleep down here, it's a good idea, but we problem is, is we wake up looking different. Exactly. Well, I'm not saying we actually sleep. I'd say we, we rent some rooms just to get back there and then, uh, you know, kind of... Oh, God. I'm glad you're coming up with this, because Jesus. You know, and then um, we can get down to the basement and I can actually see... Just keep in uh, mind that uh, I have told the barkeep that we don't have very much money more than once. So. It's also been about yeah. five hours, just letting you know. Well, you said you don't have much money. We don't know how much he's going to charge us. and We could work for it. I mean, you know. It's true. We could, I could, I could wash dishes. It. Jan could sing. That sort of thing. Uh, you know. You could move some kegs uh, around. going to say, I could lift things up and put them down. We could gamble. <laughs> I've, uh, I've played a few cards. I actually, I was a gambler. Like I was, you know, that's one of the things yeah. that I did. So I mean, we could try it, but getting this, back to our roots might, might not be the right uh, environment for that at the time. Exactly. Yeah. So I yeah, like it's it. it's pretty right. solemn here. So maybe looking for work if we wanted to rent, or we could just around. So either I way, I think the barkeep and see if we can persuade yeah. him to give us a little for work. Go to Kaimal. Yeah. All right, so I'll kind of sure. wander over yep. to the barkeep and say, uh, oh, "No one be on the bar. Ah, I'm on the stool." Like, Excuse me, sir. Oh yes. Oi, how much to sleep in your basement? Uh, we don't give uh, rooms in the basement. It's just a cellar down there, just some ale. Uh, but oh. if you would like a bed, it's uh, three copper pieces per night. Would uh, Would it be possible for us to do some work around here to get the bed? As I've told you, we're in We'll strap for cash. I could continue to uh, entertain the the folk here. And my other two comrades might be able to assist. Uh, very well. I'm trying to keep the entertainment uh, modest. I'll of course. I'll allow you to do that, but I'm not, uh, I'm not very trusting of uh, new folk simply moving about and cleaning and touching things to steal or some, someone's coin pouch or something so let's just I'll use the a, performances for now could i use a persuasion check to try and convince him to allow us to do some work to help around all right persuasion like well sir you know we're, we're just simple folk and we're just trying to make a have somewhere to stay for the night before i can pick tomorrow. things up yeah, very well yeah, pick up all the 
empty tankards and uh, dirty dishwater, bring it into the kitchen and uh, help Teddy out with uh, cleaning of the dishes. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, sir. I kind of flick my fingers to both of you and, <laughs> and I'll point to go. Names, and... names as well of all three of you, just in case. Ah, of course, of course. My name, good sir, is Gregory. <laughs> Gregory. Yes, yes, my companions over there yeah. are Charles. Charles. Which one's Charles? Uh, Brumal will be Charles. Okay. And the other one there, his name is Roger. Roger. And I kind of whisper, he's a little on the simple side. Uh, Did you just... well. I hate my name. Did you tell him my <laughs> fucking name? <laughs> oh, God mm. damn it. Uh, it's fine. Uh, so we'll get Roger to go about with him. Um, he goes over to the wall and grabs a straw broom. You can start sweeping up all the uh, excess peanuts and uh, uh, whatever is spilled on the ground. I think there's some vomit over there. So there's a mop as well and a bucket with some water. Uh, you could do that. And we'll get uh, your friend Charles to yes, clean Charles. the dishes. Excellent, excellent. So that kind of. I met a guy who could get stains out of pretty much anything. You're gonna love this. This is gonna be awesome. That's, uh, that's good. So I'll move over to you know, wherever he instructs me to. I'll, I'll kind of, kind of shamble over a little timid, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll you know I'll explain to him. Don't 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 mind my stature, sir. I am quite good with my hands. So I appreciate you uh, giving us this opportunity to work off our stay. Uh, yes. Uh... Just no trouble. No trouble at all. None at all, none at all. Just don't break anything. I go back to the front and start off with another, you know, mooring uh, kind of tune to... All right. Performance. Make another performance check. The DC's lowered since you were successful last time, so it's just a DC 17. Okay. Give me a second here. Don't roll one. Don't roll one. Performance. <laughs> This one's not so good. So, the people kind of turn their chairs away, and then you can kind of see as some of their backs start to hunch a little more, and their head starts to lower a bit more, and they get a little bit closer to their tankard. Do you keep All going? right, well, uh, I'll keep going, but I'll kind of be like, well, apparently I can read the room, and this is not the appropriate tune for this occasion. Make a so. dexterity save. Dexterity <laughs> save, okay. Yeah. Ooh. Ding, 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 ding. As a tanker goes flying right past you, just duck in time. <laughs> You're not sure where it came from. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That sure. was definitely not one of my best performances. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try to create just something better. So <laughs> cowboy. Congar is fucking mopping up. He's like, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this time I'm going to do, uh, try to do something a little bit more upbeat, but still, you know, proper to the occasion. Okay. Be on much harder. <laughs> it's, it's back up 30. again. Okay, yeah. yeah. They're liking it a bit more. It's a bit more chill. Uh, it's a little bit louder, too, so you guys can probably get away with a little bit more. Uh, Bermal and you end up, like, picking up all, the, all, all these dishes and everything. You make your way to the kitchen. Uh, you kind of start washing up around the uh, water basins. And you see Teddy kind of, like, making, like, the preparations for tomorrow uh giving out like whatever's left of like whatever meat and food that they have out to the rest of the customers that want it okay so it's basically just like a larder kitchen slash, you know all that sort yeah. of thing back here i'm assuming yeah okay okay um so yeah i'll uh i'll kind of give like a like a I don't know. Just a, just a simple nod to Teddy, I guess. That Teddy's his name, said? Yeah, Teddy. Yeah, he, as he just keeps his head bowed a little bit, but he kind of slightly turns his head towards you. Doesn't give you eye contact. You can barely see the front of his face. Just don't come so he, in trouble. Right. Okay. So he seems like somebody who is, I guess, basically in charge, or is he like kind of like servile as well? Like, is he He's the survival. command? Okay. Okay, so, uh, 
I'll uh, kind of do whatever back here. I'll start washing dishes and, and providing that Teddy's going to be around for a little bit. Like if he's attending to something, I'll kind of maybe strike up a conversation, not to not to pry or anything, but just uh, uh, I'll I'll kind of ask him. Um... Take a charisma check first. Okay, yeah, that's I'm gonna fail immediately. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not that's bad for a minus average. one. Okay. Yeah. So I'll. Uh, I'll say to him, so, oh, well, we kind of kind of stumbled in here on a, on some bad timing, huh? Um, yeah, they're, uh, they're busy uh, with some sort of uh, funeral for, um, I think it's Jonas's uh, love. Um, it's too bad she was a uh, very nice lady. And it's kind of like goes back and keeps working uh, like he's trying not to talk too much. Right. So I'll uh, I'll ask questions about I'll I'll just be like um So uh so that that Jonas fella he's uh is he the owner of the the tavern here or what uh Well yes, wait to he's, see. he's the he's the owner yes he's the owner of the, the tavern yeah he's a he's a go by Jonas then kind of like looks at you well, you just call him Jonas yeah. So I heard I heard uh, Teddy say jaundice. So yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. So okay, well, uh, my my apology. So it what was it? Uh, James was it? J James. Yes, James. All right. That's my that's my slip. That's my slip. He just kind of like smashes the table. <laughs> you hear uh, all the other side. Is there is anything okay in there, Teddy? No, it's fine. It's fine. It's Kiki's working. <laughs> I'll ask. Uh, so, uh, where where did he go? I, did he uh, not not like it's any of my business? But uh, it seems kind of odd that you know, Love's casket is sitting in the middle of the room and nowhere to be seen. He's uh, he's very um, he's, he's very distraught. So he's uh, he is he's finding that just there's wine. Cellar, so he's probably just drinking by himself in the in the cellar. That's what he does. All right. Well, that makes sense, I suppose. So I'll just keep, uh, you know, washing some dishes. Um, and I'll I'll say, oh, I'm sorry, sorry to bother you. I he just here. just trying. To... <sighs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I am going to take a bunch of. Clean dishes, I guess, or or whatever kind of happens. If uh, I'll take some out to to the barkeep or whatever, and some tankards or whatever, and I'll kind of just like go on my own accord and start walking around the tavern and just like placing things down on the tables so as I see fit. Before you go and everything, like you used to kind of like put some of the extra tankards away in the kitchen, and yeah. like it's and you see there's tankards there, so that's where they go. But Teddy just gets all angry. He's like, oh, they don't go there. They go here. And he like, starts moving them around the pointless places. Like he's just trying to uh, make the place uncomfortable so you leave. Okay. So, yeah, I, I take the hint and I'm like, sorry, sir. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you be. That's fine. And I'll just kind of like scoot yeah, out of the room. Fine, just fine. like, okay. So I'll, uh, I'll just kind of without being asked, I'll just start, you know, wiping down the bar and I'll wipe down tables and if I don't get stopped then I'll just keep doing that basically just to kind of survey the room and see if I can hear anything in the process mm -hmm. or see anything in the process I'll just kind of go from table to table basically being a bar or a sorry like a uh like a waiter yeah. essentially bus boy and the yeah bus boy like yeah giving you like the you, you notice it uh he's getting like these like uh, like kind of singular raised eyebrows like he's like just giving you a, an eye like he's like hmm, kind of like nodding kind of like just you just see like a slight nod of respect uh as you're working extra hard he looks over towards where conga is like trying to sweep and stuff uh i'm gonna say conga just make a performance check just for it uh not not even oh, okay fine <laughs> make me go ahead <laughs> uh okay you're gonna fail so much at sweeping that it's gonna the jig is up. Yeah, like, the jig is this, up. This you're you're gonna fuck that. <laughs> yeah, it's all your fault, Kongar. Yep, yeah. this is what's going to out us. Yeah, 
Oh, oh my pretty God. damn good with a broom. Yeah, oh, you're sweeping yeah. up. You're like making you like, know your way around the kitchen and lines and stuff, and you're kind of like lightly pushing in chairs as well as you're going around, pulling them out and sweeping. And you got like an, uh, another kind of eyebrow from like like he's he's noticing you, Congar, and like kind of fills you with this kind of like slight pride for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, your performances go well. Uh, Brumal, as you're going around and trying to listen, uh, I'm not going to make you make a perception check since you're getting right up freaking close and you can read lips yeah. and everything. Um, you do hear slight murmurings of, you know, like, I can't wait to go and uh, finish our game downstairs, you know? Like, I think I got a pretty ha good hand coming up. Um, it's like, yeah, I lost a lot uh, last night. I could probably use a, a couple more wins. Uh, hopefully John this isn't gonna be, you know, staring us down while we're trying to play our game. Hopefully he doesn't join us and wipe us clean again. We're gonna have to pretend to lose, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, you hear there's uh, some other guys kind of like complaining about some of the noise coming from, you know, the other room. Uh, and they, they you kind of gathers like the room next to where they gamble or something like that. Like, uh, too much moaning and groaning, uh, too much whining, like, need a thicker door. Um, the cells, uh, kind of, like, down the hall are kind of kind of starting to smell. Um, you know, I heard, uh, you know, uh, uh, Wilkins is, like, stealing some kind of stuff from the, is the supplier. I heard some, uh, some of the suits gone missing. Okay. Well, that's it's a possibility. Um, so, um, as I do my rounds, um, I'll eavesdrop. Obviously, that's what I'm doing. I'll, I'm kind of eavesdropping, but I'll, I'll kind of make it. Um, you know, as I'm, I'm doing my rounds, I'll, I'll when they say that they're talking about like you know a game or whatever, I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm a bit of a. I'm a bit of a, a chance taker myself, and then I'll and I'll kind of just, you know, I'll gauge the responses. Like if they if they want nothing to do with me, I won't say anything. But if they're kind of you know, they seem a little passive or whatever, I'll be like, oh yeah. So what's your game? Sun and moon, you know, dice, whatever. And I'll kind of just I'll kind of work my way into the conversation and be like, I'm I'm a bit of a gambler myself, sort of thing. Make a First, make a charisma check, and then we'll do uh, evens or odds to see where it goes from there. If it's low, low enough. Make a evens or odds. Odds bad, evens good. Uh -oh. It's bad. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. You see, uh, the one guy at the uh, one end of the table there just says, uh, might be able to bring in on a game, perhaps, uh, if, if you're interested. How much, uh, uh, how much money you got? Um, well, I got a, a bit. Uh, I'm kind of working some of that up tonight, uh, as you can probably see. Uh, my friends over there, um, they're, they are they consider themselves uh, players as well. Um, if you If you need a few extra seats for your table, but uh, we could probably pool our resources together. And I'm trying to make myself look like like a novice gambler, like like I'd be an easy mark. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, so, and then, you know, if he asks any questions about the, you know, what game I'm playing, I'll kind of slip up, like if he says whatever game, I'll, I'll, I'll mix up some terminology and make it look like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm really desperate to try to win money, even though it looks like I'm just going to fucking lose. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get into the game um, and get us into the game. I think that's that's one avenue to take. I, I mean, say, yeah. Based on this, you can choose persuasion or deception. Hey. Uh, persuasion is bad. Deception is equally bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, charisma is not my not my thing. Um, well. I'll try a persuasion. Okay. And, you know, kind of look desperate, like, you know, I just, I 
I, I need anything to try and get some money. Like, I look like somebody that would be a victim. Like, trying to make myself look like a victim for this type of person. Whether it be, you know, easy to sell drugs to, or to take my money in a, you know, gambling bet or something. So, yeah, persuasion is terrible. Uh... It's really bad, yeah. I don't know if we could trust him. He kind of looks uh, a bit shady. Yeah. This is where you called Jan over. Yeah, he could be a right. He might be. Uh, well, might be oh trying. wait, I, I just, I don't, I don't really, I, I'm, and I, I just kind of stumbling over my words, and I'm, I'm trying to, I, I'm not much for words. I, I don't really know. I just. Yeah, maybe, maybe we, next time, uh, Roger or uh, Gregory, was your name? Yeah, no, Charles. Yeah. That's the one, Charles. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. We're just we're I'm new to town here, and we're just we're just really we're trying anything to to make a few extra copper. Uh, maybe maybe like we we kind of just follow suit with uh, um with Gregory here. He he's better for words and more of a people person. But maybe he'll convince you, and I'll kind of like when he I'll wait for him to finish his song or whatever, and I'll I'll kind of wave him over and explain the the situation and see if we can't get in. If if he thinks maybe gambling is a good idea or, or whatever, I'll I'll just completely play the novice. Like I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm I'm trying to do things on my own, but I'm failing miserably at it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And the other one at the table says, I don't know if you should bring down here because if uh, Jaundice finds out that we brought some just random stranger downstairs, he'll have our heads. And that's all. That's what you hear as you kind of try to get Jan to come over. I kind of wander over after my song and. You know, kind of. Oh, hey, an evening, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Oh, that was quite a song that you did there. Quite a song. Oh, yeah, the last you. one before was this right shape, but uh, the, that that most recent one was pretty good. Well, you know, I gotta I gotta work my audience in sometimes because they can't all be good. Otherwise, you'll always expect perfection from me. Make a dexterity save. Dexterity save. All right. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, I almost got him that time. He hears him like <laughs> laugh from the other table. Like, <laughs> I start laughing and I kind of give them a smile and a wink. Be like, oh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> you rascal. <laughs> uh, 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 you didn't say the magic word. <laughs> so, yeah. so it kind of um, sounds like I'm uh, kind of like, I'm like, oh, what's. Uh, Kind of see the conversation getting a little excited over here. I just want to make sure that uh, nothing, nothing was going on, you know. I want to make sure everybody's staying nice and calm and quiet. Ah, Low heart we're beats. Calm. We're, we're, we're pl plenty calm. Ah, yeah. oh, excellent, excellent. I kind of give Brumal a side glance, like <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of just, um, I explain the situation, and I, I try to look apologetic and. You know, kind of, uh, I, I stutter a little bit and be like, oh, I just I just thought, you know, because uh, we're looking for work and all, uh, these guys were talking about, you know, having a a gentleman's game uh, downstairs and maybe we could, you, you know, we could ante in a little bit and we could, you know, try our luck. Uh, you know, oh. it was just an idea. Yes, well, Charles here, he tends to lose every bloody time. And, Guilty. Uh... My gosh, right. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, seems you know, kind of a, a harder on luck. Kind of half the reason why we're trying to earn money right now. Yeah, so guilty on that. Too. The bar, and like I kind of lower my. Raise. Yeah. Uh, could you possibly give us a chance? You know, I'm not too bad at the cards. I might be able to give at least a fair chance. Make a. Uh, deception. Deception. Persuasion? persuasion. Your choice. Well, persuasion's way better. So persuasion. <laughs> Please see it my way. <laughs> Halfling on the on the other side says, "All right, well, we'll maybe give you a chance." Um, and kind of whispers to the one dwarf from the end there, and only for all you can really hear is, "You know, it's only three of them. They look pretty, uh, pretty lanky. I think we could probably take them you know, if they try to do anything funny." Just gonna nod for no, no funny business, sir. I, we, we promise. Just, hey, you're, just a, you're reading I'm lips. Game. You're yeah, reading lips. And, uh, and the half the oh, am I reading lips? Oh, I thought he was just saying that to us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. I didn't say that. 
quite take, and if you, take years on you, don't you? <laughs> and then I'll kind of like go talk over him, like, ah, and of course, <laughs> if, if you'd like, I can, I can entertain with whatever kind of uh, song that you would like. I'm not too bad as uh, with the voice, as you can see. All right, let's head on downstairs. Ah, excellent, excellent. You won't regret it. What are we doing? So, come on, Roger. We're gonna we're gonna go have sit down and enjoy some company downstairs. Okay, but I've almost got it cleaned up. We'll come back and finish it in in a little bit. And as you kind of go past the bartender, right. uh, he just kind of sighs a little. Let's see here. We'll come back. We'll finish. So. Uh, you guys make your way as, as you are led. Down the hall this way. Ah, don't worry, I got a torch on me. I'm assuming the, the disguise spell uh, disguises all our gear and stuff. Like it's. Yeah, it makes us yeah, look unless like. Unless you pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and Just, or if, you know, somebody touches us past the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So, so like, yeah, if it makes us look a foot shorter, it'll probably make my, you know, rhyme razors look like fucking butter knives. So. Well, right now you just look like you're just wearing peasant clothes, so. Right. I need my, I need, I like my personal space. I'll, I'll play <laughs> cards, but don't touch me. <laughs> All right, hurry up, let's go. All righty. Follow along. Gotta put myself kind of wherever. Yeah, I'll put myself in between. These guys end up making their way inside. Kind of follow suit, I guess, or whatever. Yep. And... <laughs> Look at this beautiful. All right. Well, uh, where do I sit? I guess we'll pull uh, up, well, pull up here. You can take my spot. I got some work to do inside, anyways. Who is that? Uh. Don't worry about him. He's just uh, he's he's a bit of an artist, I suppose you could say. Hmm. Some guy goes to sit on like a, a a sack. I can uh, I'm I'm like a food artist. I like cooking. He's a different kind of artist. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, specializes in sculpting anatomy. Hmm. Well, gents, would you, uh, would you like me to play with you, or would you like a, a song to kind of bring up the festivities a bit? Well, I think we should uh, all play. Uh, oh, all right. probably our best bet is, uh, I don't know, maybe you should give all your money over there to Charles, and uh, he can add you for you. He looks like the best uh, gambler out of all of you. What do you say? Uh, I don't know if I'd call him the best gambler. I'd call him probably one of the bloody worst. I'm like, but uh, uh, I just how, how about, how about uh, uh, we play around uh, together first, and then if uh, if I win it, I'll give it all to Charles. How's that? Well, we more want to, to see if Charles can uh, hold his own in the game. You know, he's the he's the big talker, right? You're the huh? you're the singer. Fair, fair, fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, uh, I kind of. You know, pretend to pull out a small pouch of like a few copper coins over and kind of give it over to Charles and kind of give him the don't bloody lose it. <laughs> now, now's gonna lose it. Oh, now's, my, now's my chance to prove myself. I, I, <laughs> my, luck, my luck's got to change at some point, right? Right, fellas? Right, fellas? And I'll kind of laugh like, <laughs> kind of like look around. I just kind of shake, like, shake my head and just like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> The, the snoo snoo smile. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So yeah, I'll... the spirit is willing, but the body is <laughs> <Yeah>. bruised and tender. <laughs> now, where did I put that? 
Oh well, yeah, I guess I'll put whatever right, it is. Well, like, since, uh, I gave him money to Brumal, I'll just kind of go stand over here and you know, stand behind him. All right. Hey, so well, I'll put it down. You think you'll be playing against me then, eh? Let's play a game. So of be it. Moon. Best of luck, sir. And so, who's he playing against? Which one? He's playing against With this guy here. Dwarf. That guy there? Okay. So, yeah. I'm going to kind of keep my eye on him and watch for sleight of hands or anything like that that's going on. All right. Even though I'd probably see this as well. Yeah. So, it's played. It's players agree to a bet, money, or treasure. And what are you adding up? Whatever I got. I'll just kind of like pull a bunch of this many, you know? <laughs> Uh, so whatever's in my... It's probably like a handful of copper at best. Roll a d10 for how many? Sure. Three. Three copper. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. many. The dwarf's just like... <laughs> <Can> I... <sighs> well, it's, uh, you got anything else valuable besides... Uh, just uh, copper? You got a nice, some nice jewelry? You got some kind of... Fancy... Trinkets. I could. Well, this has been a kind of a family heirloom. Uh, I don't know how much it's worth. Uh, I've kind of kept it, you know, just it's more of a novelty item than anything. But uh, and I'll pull out the uh, the pot of awakening. Pretty sure all it does is make plants grow out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you put something in it already to get something to? No, I never used it. <laughs> it's been sitting in my inventory since, like, fucking level one. I don't even know. Yeah, it's been sitting there. I've just had the Pot of Awakening, and it makes things grow really fast. It's it's uh, actually... It, it makes, a, an awa like, an awakened plant. So it's a it makes a, a plant alive. So it walks around. <laughs> and it, and it, and it, yeah, it kind of acts like a familiar or something, yeah. right? Like, it doesn't really... Yeah. So it's, um... Well, I... <laughs> Well, he's, when he puts that down, I'm going to do a performance check to be like, why the bloody hell did you dig that out three days ago when we needed food? <laughs> well, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I <laughs> think it's one of our last legs here and three coppers all go. I got left. All right. So. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get a guy to make a little appraisal there. Basically, what we could, what actually, <laughs> what I could do is like, I could put the pot of awakening on the table, and I'll grab a peanut off the floor and bury it in the dirt, and then just like, <laughs> it'll be like, like literally, the planter's peanuts will start like, like, hello, oh my, my baby, you know, like dancing on the <laughs> table. <laughs> I think it takes a day and some water. Oh, does it? Oh, that would be fucking hilarious. Just like the planter's <laughs> peanut, like the fucking from Clone High, like the, the peanut guy. Oh, like, God, like, right. <laughs> Let's see. Pot. Of awakening. Mm -hmm. That thing. If you plant an ordinary shrub in this 10 pound clay pot, Jesus Christ, and uh, let it grow for 30 days, the shrub magically transforms to an awakened shrub. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll give him my word. Yeah, it's 10 pounds. Oh, it's shit. 10 pounds, yeah. Goosh <laughs> on the tail. <laughs> That's uh, all I that have. Was... Is, uh, I decided in my backpack. I carry around a, a pot. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was tiny. Yeah, I thought it was tiny. I had no idea how big it was. That's Maybe so I won't do that then. It's still kind of funny. No, it's kind of good. <laughs> well, no, this, well, is good. this is good. This is fitting yeah. for. Our... And he already did. Not again. <laughs> how poor we are. Like a, a a jar of dirt would would probably be accurate. I guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm literally worth nothing. You're the guy like, who has no idea what he has. Like yeah. value wise, like you don't even know if that's valuable. You were just told, yeah. You know, the character so, you're playing, at least the dwarf. Three kind of copper. Gives you like this, like just this look, like that's like just surprised, confused, and disgusted yeah. all in one. And the one uh, kind of more uh, darkly clothed uh, guy at the end of the table kind of looks at it. Says, "Ah, oh, I don't know what that is. That's a uh, that's a part of awakening. <laughs> the fool just dropped it on yeah, the table, not knowing what it was." That's what I've been told. I, I don't really know the value of it. Is it, is it worth anything? Ah, not too much. Not too much. I didn't like looking at the <laughs> he's lying. Yeah, I, of course he's... Yeah, I'm just playing, you know... 
big toothy fucking grin. <laughs> so I kind of, I kind of try to like, like I kind of struggle with it, like sliding it on the table, knocking over piles of coins, and you know, yeah. like maybe whatever, kind of clear a spot away, and like I don't know, is 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 this okay? This is, can we can we ante up with this? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, and Kyle looks at the guy at the other table, and kind of gives him like this kind of smiling nod, like yeah, yeah, just uh, hey, spot there, you know. I'll take it. I'll take that. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to add you up uh, to make it fair. Uh, two gold pieces, I think. That should you probably even up with your with your copper. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's very generous. I had no idea. That's great. I, okay. Well, let's play. I've never seen this much money. Yeah. And you hear from the other room, like all three of you, ah! Ah! like this kind of just like scream of pain. It's like ah, I think shut that puppy's up. in trouble. Like from behind us, like in this direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of look. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind that. Don't worry about it. It happens all the time. They just they're like lifting stuff. Someone probably dropped a crate on their toe or some shit. All right. So, Sun and Moon. And so, uh, so players need to bluff their opponent, convince them that they are higher or lower than their opponent. So. One player can demand that. Both players show their scores early. The player who declares light must then declare whether their opponent's declaration of higher or lower is truth or a lie before revealing each other's score. If the accuser is correct, they win the bet. If they're wrong, the defender wins the bet. If, in the end, round three, no player has requested to show the other player's score, the highest score wins the bet. Dude, if you can see Shimmer. <laughs> oh, Jerry. Yeah? While they're playing, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to cast um, Mislead on myself. Okay. I know what that is. Uh-huh. Uh... So I go invisible, and there's a double of myself that stands exactly where I was. Yep. I've okay, that. And, uh, and I'm going to go sneaking into the back room. So that room opens inward, and uh, they might see that. Well, they might not. All right, fair enough. Uh, I want to say, to do that, you're going to have to make a stealth check, even though... Yep, no, that's sure. fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. Well, I was going to say stealth or sleight of hand, so... Stealth check. 23. Okay. Where is this? Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, let me just close that. And let me just... Blah. D10. Oh. That is not correct. There. Hmm. Where's his stuff? Ah. How high is this ceiling in the basement here? I'll be right back. Ceiling? Oh, it's just 10 feet. Okay. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, perception. Okay, just plus wisdom. Yep. You make your way inside. Close the door. You just kind of slink in really nicely. Yep, just slink in. Uh, you see, there appears to be... Uh, I... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a, a pale guard without any armor on uh, appears to be mm, probably let's see clickety yeah appears to be a female dwarf um, she's been heavily cut uh Seems to be missing a pinky finger and a big toe. Now, would I recognize her as the one lady that Bramal knows because he would have told me any information on it, or no? You gather... Connie King. Yeah, you there gather you? that there's a, uh, a dwarven, uh, a female dwarf that he knows, but you're not sure if this is the one. Okay. Now... In this, so there's female dwarf, and I'm guessing there is um, that guy that came in here. Yeah. I told you her name, so I guess if you could hear that her name was 
Connie or whatever, then maybe that you could put two and two together. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's um, right. uh, give me a second here. You should have had a. There's light in there. Just give me a sec. Uh, I'm pretty sure I put that. There it is. One lantern. Oh, there is one right there. There we go. All right, so just the two of them, right? Yeah. And blue. There you go. But yeah, just the two of them. Um, All right, so. But first, through them all. Let's get your sun and moon going here. So, <laughs> start by rolling a d8, hiding the result from your opponent. Okay. Uh, he's going to say... No, dark, dark. Dark means lower, right? Like that's what. No, he's uh, he wants to, he doesn't want to reveal. Okay, right. So he doesn't want to reveal his role. Yeah. So light means uh, one player can declare light becoming the accuser. Right. So if he yeah, if he said light, he would he would show his hand, and then. Uh no, he he would accuse you, and he would say. Uh, if your your die, your total is currently higher or lower. Okay. Yeah, and if he's if he's correct, you lose. If he's uh, if he's wrong, you win. It's the same for you though. Okay, so I will I will call light. Or does he nope. control the board like? We nope. each each zero. Okay. If, if if you go dark, you're passive. So as soon as you do light, you're, you're accusing. So higher or lower? Does is his total currently l higher or lower than yours? Lower. Ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> and he reveals his hand, and yeah, it's lower. All right. Well. Two... I clap. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Across the I, I table. Won. I, won. I won. That's that's right. I, I made my illusion pat the ball on the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, told you, I told you my luck was about to change. I, I told you. And you see, uh, throughout the room, some of the other guys kind of like looking at each other and kind of like patting their weapons a little bit. But then we're going to go back to, uh, to Jen. Jen, what are you doing? All right. So what's the torturer here doing? Uh, looks like he's kind of going over his tools there on the table. Let's see. Uh, so he has his back turned to me right now? Uh, kind of, you're to the side of him currently. To the side of him, yeah, okay. Yeah, so he, he's looking, he's by the table looking towards it, which is towards the door. Uh, yeah. So you would technically be in his view. But I'm invisible, so he can't see me. Yeah. So just, hmm, let's see. Ah, oh, this is a... Very nice technique, is you take the needles, you see, and you place them underneath the fingertips and just press and press. We'll get the information from you soon enough. You I'm going know. to Ooh. wait f for him to kind of turn himself so that he's facing the uh, the dwarf lady. Yep. So he kind of picks up one of them and begins to make his way over towards the dwarf lady. Okay, now my next question is, is he wearing any armor or anything of that sort? Uh, he does appear to be wearing some studded leather. Studded leather, but his neck and head are fairly exposed? Yeah, for the most part, I suppose. He's a pretty, All right. pretty built dude, it looks like. He is, but uh, if I... Uh kind of just come up to him and slit his throat, then it's pretty hard for him to really do anything. Fair enough. 
Uh, I'll give you double damage on it for this surprise, just for this. Some rule. Double? Rule. Just, so, <laughs> just so you can, if you can, if you can pull it off, you can kill him in one shot. Okay, so I'm going to do... But I'm doubting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess technically I can't use my crossbow in this case. I'll have to use my rapier, correct? Yeah, that'd be a disadvantage because you're in close quarters. The crossbow would be, but rapier would not be. No. Okay, so we're going to do... Rapier isn't much of a throat slit. It's much... No, but it's a very good throat stab. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, I do have the long, uh, short sword as well. Where's the short sword? A short sword, like 3d8 piercing? A short sword? 3d8? No, just like, one, 1d8 piercing, correct? Yeah, yeah, just a regular short sword. Yeah, they're they're pretty weak. No, a short sword is 1d6. 1d6? Yeah. Kay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just curious on why I have a 3d6 damage type added. Yeah. Oh, that was the second play. Okay, so I'm going to do the 1d6 attack. I'm just going to use the rapier one because um, I don't have the short sword like toggled on that. Yeah. Actually, so I'm going to change this up here. Okay. Uh, I will allow you to incapacitate him if you roll a natural 18 or higher instead of double damage. Temporary. On, on my attack roll? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Got but it. I won't be able to do double damage then. Uh, no, I'm going to take away your double damage because this is more, it takes away the whole point of sneak attack and everything. Um, so I want to say sense, yeah. he's incapacitated to the point where you could really take advantage of his weakness at that point to kind of finish him off, I suppose. Or just incapacitate him just straight up, like just keep him, take him out of the combat, I guess, or take him out of as a threat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sap him or something. You won't totally kill him right away unless you actually do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a rolling an 18 total or? Uh, eight, natural 18 or higher. So 18, 19 or 20. Natural 18 or higher. So the, the not after the modifiers then? Yeah, no, not after them. Just uh, right. that's right. the incapacitation. Uh, right. Just because it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Definitely is, yeah. So things can go wrong. But as soon as you attack, you are no longer invisible and your illusion disappears. Oh, good point, yeah. Almost makes me wonder if you could just get some distance between them and your crossbow, anyways, if it's your main weapon because it just does so much more damage. But I don't know, it's a hard call, I guess. Is it just the two of them in that room, the dwarf and the uh, I mean, I'm not supposed to know this, but yeah, yeah, the, the door's closed, yeah, no right, reason. and it's just the <coughs> skin There's shaper, a, a cage there as well. There's a torture rack. Try to get really creative with your spells. Fall onto some spikes. And on the other side, with uh, the long conga. So, uh, all right. Well, I think we should probably do another hand for sure. Uh, you should go all in. And the guys are like, we should just, we should just welcome. What are we? Uh, fucking. <laughs> 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 uh, Make my day. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, oh. I've been saying this for so long. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You gotta <laughs> uh.
<laughs> How you do, Ramal? Are you going all in for another game? Yeah, did you just send me something? Nope. Or... No, I just put something on chat. Oh, okay. I'm just like, yeah. I suck at Discord, so I have no idea. There's so much shit going on on Discord all the time for me, so yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, yeah, no, I'll go all in, but uh, it, can, can I maybe just keep the, the pot? Just can I take it out of the... Can I keep the pot out of the pot? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think you should still ante up the, the pot just so, you know, because cause it's, uh, it's a good little extra. Uh, okay, well, so then... So then um, so the, I've got the, this uh, uh, hand axe, and I just put, like, a basic hand axe on the table. What? <laughs> and the guy behind you, like, where did that come from? Hey, is it always on? I mean, Did they I frisk was... these fuckers before they came here? I mean, all of you guys were wearing yours. I thought it was cool. I, Sorry, but that's it. That's all I got. Make a decision it was... check. Because all your stuff is... Throw hatchet at his face check. Yeah, all your stuff is, like, invisible. So you should just pull it out of, like, nowhere like a magician. Yeah. <laughs> well, I get advantage because of my cloud rune, so... All right. <laughs> it's just a hand axe. Nothing special. Oh, wait, that is wrong. But it's a natural one anyway, so I'll just yep. keep that. I'll allow it. <laughs> uh, so if they just kind of like shake their heads, you know, glitch the matrix kind of thing. Uh, and it's like, all right, well, let's, uh, let's roll. Yay, right. and I clap. And he anties up four gold. Okay, hey, I put the pot and my two gold in. And he goes, dark. No. Dark, yeah. <laughs> this game is super confusing. Light. <laughs> Alright. What do you accuse me of? Higher or lower? Higher. He reveals his hand. He's got four... Motherfuckers! And he just takes out his his sword. The other guys take out their swords. Like, let's fuck him up. <laughs> my illusion. Can my illusion fuck? Or... Uh, I don't think that it can. But I'll yeah, double, check. Just double check. Here. Just meeting. As they're like getting ready to come and attack, okay, you can use your action to move your illusion double up to twice your speed and make a gesture, speak and behave in whatever you, way you oh, choose. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna make the illusion be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's let's keep it friendly here, gents. Let's uh let's, <laughs> let's go for another hand. Let's go all in, triple or nothing. Triple or nothing. Make a persuasion check, advantage. Uh, I don't think I'll need the advantage, but just in case. <laughs> don't ever Where's... say that. Just... Oh. You ever see two crazy. natural ones in a row? I have. Yeah, 30, let's see, persuasion, 33. Yeah, okay. yeah they all kind of put their weapons away. The one dwarf kind of, kind of move, kind of just brushes his hair back and just, just kind of stresses away. It's just, all right, I probably overreacted a little bit. Congar's just like, oh. Hey! No, 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 hey! understandable, you know. He he usually always loses. His luck is turning. I'm kind of proud of him, but let's keep this game friendly. <laughs> so, what do you got now? You got like six gold pieces in the pot? Yep. And a hand axe. And a hand axe. <laughs> Two silver yeah. hand axe. Yeah. <laughs> it was once part of a matching set. Let's try this again. A little child has the other one. Make your roll. All right. Okay. So while they're playing that one, can I do the... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just goes into standby mode. Just <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> 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 it's like the spinning, like the loading thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
textures. Okay, so I am going to try and do my Shadow Lore Whisper on the Torturer. So as an action, um, I can imbue basically magic into words and like whisper it. So it doesn't break my invisibility. I can whisper a phrase. Uh, only one creature of my choice within 30 feet can hear it, which is obviously the, the torture guy. Mm -hmm. The target must make a wisdom saving throw against my spell DC. So my spell DC is 19. So wisdom saving throw of 19. If it succeeds, he basically... Um, or sorry, if it fails, he's charmed by me for the next eight hours or until... I attack or damage him, um, and blah, blah, blah. While I, I gain no knowledge of his secrets, the target is convinced I know it, and you basically do anything I say. Is this a frightened thing? Uh, so while you gain no knowledge of the secret, the target is convinced you know it. While charmed in, the, in this way, the creature obeys your commands for fear that you will reveal its secrets. It won't risk its life for you or fight for you unless it is already inclined to do so. It grants you favors and okay. gifts it offers to a close friend. And then... So Interesting. As he's, like, pushing the needle uh, into the uh, dwarf's finger, and she's, like, just, like, just, like, kind of, like, just try to, like, keep uh, the pain in. Um, he drops the needle, so it's ding, 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 onto the ground, and it's just like a look of fucking horror on his face. Immediately, this cold sweat goes over his head, and you see it over his chest and everything. He's like, ah, 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 ah. And he's not really <laughs> sure what's happening here. What he's scared about, he's like, there's just something really fucking wrong. <laughs> and I, uh, so that cage that's in the corner, uh, I'm going to tell him, go inside and lock yourself in. <laughs> goes inside and just like closes it and, and locks it and just like goes inside and the dwarf was like, what the fuck <laughs> and, <they'll be> like, <laughs> and you shall not speak or make any sound and he's kind of like slumps down on the ground and he just puts both his hands over his mouth and just like has his eyes wide open he's like looking from side he's just like this totally fucking ripped <laughs> looking guy just like <gasps> thinking about what he's done yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh my god, is that what I've been doing to people? <laughs> oh, that hurts. I belong here. <laughs> so. And then I'll cut. So now that, you know, that's that. Yeah. Um, I'll kind of go up behind the dwarf and whisper, I'm a friend, don't make noise, and start undoing their bindings. Okay. If that happens, Rumal, did you make your roll? Two? Yep. Two again, yep. Okay. Right. Dark. And he's like looking at you with just like just coal eyes. Cross my arms and I, I'm all of a sudden so confident in myself. <laughs> and oh, wait, I, I is, say to him how he loses. Yeah, and I say to him Is that your final answer? Did I fucking <laughs> stutter? <laughs> 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 oh I love it. <laughs> Light. All right. Higher or lower? Higher. So, he's going to try to make a <laughs> sleight of hand check. <laughs> okay. My so. perception is 26. Passive perception. Okay. Because you're that close, passive will make it work. Um, plus... Yeah, not good enough, definitely. You can kind of see him, like, with, like, just his knuckles are moving kind of weird. Like, he's moving it around. And you can kind of see his eye, like, quickly getting glanced down. Like, he's he's pretty good at this. But you, you're catching him moving the dice around. Do you do anything? Okay. So I see it. And I stare at, I stare at him for, like long enough to be uncomfortable he's trying to turn you know it to silent a one. what's that he's trying to turn it to a one yeah so i kind of i i as i'm still crossing my arms i kind of lean back in my chair and i say 
You satisfied with your number? He just kind of smiles a little bit and like looks down. There's a glint in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and he reveals a one. I'm not, I was going to say, and when he says yeah, I'm going to say, well, perhaps I'm not satisfied with my answer. It, it, it doesn't work that way. You, you have to reveal. Okay, then I'll sleight of hand my die. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Okay, doesn't work that way then. All right, well, um, where is sleight of hand? Probably not. Sleight of hand anymore. is right under religion. There we go, 50. He didn't get So I guess that's versus his. <laughs> I, I rolled shit and I can't, like, wow. And you turn it to a one. So it's yep. a tie, which means... You both lose. Just split the pot, I'm assuming. Or, well, I mean, I, I mean, I called his bluff. It's technically not higher or lower, but, I mean, whatever. I guess whatever happens, but yeah, he'll probably try to keep me out of it anyway. So, all right. So it's a tie then. Let's uh, do the next roll. Yes, let's. And I'm. I'm becoming more cheeky as the games go. So we keep we keep the D8 there, and now a D6. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> a two. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and he kind of likes seeing peach. Jesus, Bruma. With his hands cupped, he's like. Yeah. All right. Ah. Uh, yeah. Light. Ah, uh, higher. Right, then I'll just say, I basically, so I say dark and then we reveal, right? Is that how that works? No, he accuses or... you, so you can't even say dark, so we... Okay, okay, so if he, if he starts, then, all right, I see, okay. So then I show him the one. And he show, he, you show him the one, and he's like... And he's going to try to slide a hand, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so I don't see his as soon as he call as sees mine. He, I don't see his die. Not immediately, but he's gonna try to do it like a, a split second. Okay. Oh. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you see him like trying to fuck around, like quickly turn it to a one. Do you do anything? Uh, I guess an eighteen. It. What's that? He reveals it like right away. He's like, ah! Oh, I said that's a tie. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I, um, <laughs> as he's doing that, um, is his pile of coin on the table? Or is his coin purse on the table? Or any, like, is he. His, his coin purse is on the table. Like, they're all, like, a lot of their gold and everything looks like, looks like the, you know, company gold. Is on tables and stuff, along with his. Okay. Um, how, uh, I mean, the table's probably, what, four feet across? Three, two, maybe not that far. I don't know. How, how far Five across eight. is Okay. Um, while he's desperately fumbling his one, he I'm going to job. try and... <laughs> yeah, he did. He, well, I guess he did a pretty good Compared job. Compared to what Brumal's fucking... Yeah. You still can't. Okay. Oh. I'll let this. I'll let this one slide. I'll be like, "Oh, another tie." Ha! See how it is. All right, well, next roll. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so while thing. that's going yeah. on, uh -huh. go ahead. I'm yeah. going to uh, basically tell the door to tell her to stay put for a second, and then I'm going to go back to the door, sneak myself out, without being hopefully being seen. So I'm going to do a stealth check. Okay. Because I'm guessing the people on the table might might see, right? Mm-hmm. They would. Show a stealthy old check. Yeah, I'll do it. All right. Just Going to basically sneak. Yep, yeah, right up to my illusion. Oh, right up. So I'm like standing basically in the same spot as my illusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, my illusion's still there, so I kind of go up to Brumal and whisper in his ear of, "She's in the back, untied." What? What are you whispering? 
You're not cheating, right? Hey, why is this uh, this big hole beside me? I don't want to see my numbers. No, uh, so I was still invisible when I whispered, so they wouldn't have seen anything. Maybe you heard. Well, you're in your illusion, your illusion. Oh, I got you, so you're poking through yeah. your illusion. Okay. Poking through my illusion. All right. Uh, so, he rolls. He cups the, the number. You can see, like, a bead of sweat on his forehead. Are rolling a D8 again, or a 6, or...? It is a D4 this time. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, he's, like, looking at it. Like, All right, uh... Uh, dark. Light. All right. Uh, yeah. R reveal same same timesies. No no take backs. Hey, and I basically prompt myself, and as as I'm about to take my hands away, I say lower. Uh, like as I, I wait for his prompt though, so that it there's no. I'm difference, right? Oh, it doesn't doesn't matter. At the very end, the highest score wins. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you you both reveal your scores. He doesn't try to pull any kind of shit. He has a three. Oh. So his total is five, and yours is six. <laughs> so he just slams both his hands on the table like fuck, <laughs> and the rest of them. The rest of them just kind of shake their head. <laughs> this is pretty fucking pathetic. Just take your money and go. Fuck, Horace. So the, the, but this is all mine? Well, I... Tell Don't you what. push it. Don't push it. Just go. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I take all the gold. I put it into my... Ragged... Fucking... Linens. And I slide the pot of Awakening in front of him. And I'm like... I would like to gift this to you, sir. As he just shakes uh, his head all angrily and like grabs it and hugs it close, and the other guy who appraises it is like kind of like laughing into his drink a little bit. You're a gentleman for letting us play with you. Uh, you gave me an opportunity for my luck to turn around, and He's I so will. Fucking salty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Of course he would be. I and I'm trying. I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to be, whatever. Not to necessarily start shit yet but yeah so there's there's your pot of awakening and i'll take the gold and they're probably not going to let me leave with it anyway or they're going to try and stop me i'm assuming but it, whatever it, it we'll kind of like they're just laughing at how just shitty horace is at this game and how he's lost more money you plan to anybody like else fleece you and you fa and he failed so hard to this peasant does anybody else want to try, my boy? Look at he's no, on just fire. No, just get that fuck out of here, okay? Stop uh, pushing your don't luck, be, all right? Don't be salty. Come on. Oh, boy. Lose with some dignity. Some of the other guys start like I pull out the weapons, like ah, okay, these guys here. I could. Uh, you guys want to arm wrestle? I can arm wrestle? Uh, maybe, maybe we should go. Um, or I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? And I know. think I think we should go. Yes, yes. Yeah, they're all looking at right. confused. So I I kind of I kind of just like I watch my back as I I keep my back to the walls as I shimmy around the table and around the guys, you know, watching my back as I kind of squeeze past them and we just leave quietly and as peacefully as possible. All right. So while they're leaving, I'm gonna get my illusion to follow them. Okay. As soon as my illusion's out of sight of them, because mm -hmm. I'm guessing they're going to be watching them leave, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to basically go back to myself and sneak back into the room. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Do you want me to do another stealth check to get into the room? Yep. All right. Boom. Oh, Ooh, lower that time. That was lower, but they're all looking the other direction, so DC should be a little bit lower. Well, your DC is is your uh, stealth, and you did sleight of hand. You need to do stealth. But same oh, thing. sorry, 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 sorry. It is the same thing. It's same bonus, so. Ooh. 
Hey. Can I get advantage because uh, they're all looking the other way? Disadvantage, you mean? <laughs> no, no, advantage because they're looking the other way. They're looking at the, the doorway where everyone left. They get advantage on against your stealth check? No, I get advantage on my stealth check. Not all of them are looking. That's fair, that's fair. Uh, so one guy kind of looks like, Hey, do you, do you guys see that door opening? Are you guys sure you don't want to arm wrestle? So you guys make your way, start making your way upstairs, I assume. Uh, I'm just going to move you guys probably here-ish. Um, where in Grimaud up here. These guys kind of take off the... Actually, the, the salty dwarf stays and he's sulking. Uh, the other dwarves kind of go to kind of guide you out with the Jan copy. Uh, but yeah, so it kind of calls it out a little bit, and from inside, the Tartarus like, just whimpering like. <laughs> no, I told him to be quiet. He cannot make sound. <laughs> it's just, it's just <laughs> from his mouth, and all you can hear is like, yeah, at least someone's doing their job, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and the door closes, and in I go. <laughs> Yeah, and we'll end the session there for tonight. All right. Indeed. That's yeah. going going fairly well. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, that's the uh, attack is so bad. Yeah, working pretty <laughs> well. I mean, if a test were here, I think this place would be on fire by now. But oh, guarantee this place would be yeah, on fire. There'd be yeah, no still. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> do do things the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. Or. Yeah, I don't or know. Or the super easy way, I don't know. It depends. It depends, you talk, yeah. Uh, Atesh's point of view. Yeah. <laughs> and what do we do? We yeah. mock people! So? <laughs> <Yeah>. I know! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I got to use that meme today. <laughs> Those guys make fucking amazing videos. Oh, yeah, I uh, sure do. <laughs> if you're looking for some fun, fast-paced, and late